Warn you, expect some robust debate, some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubry, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7 on Jubes & Co. On radio, they call it the drive time slot, 4pm until 6pm as listeners head home. It's that part of the schedule when the dust of the day's events begin to clarify and we try to make sense of it for you. Brazier is drive time for radio and TV. It's fast, it's punchy, it's opinionated, there's a Brazier angle and a little bit of levity. That's the question. That's two questions actually. <laughs> That's Brazier, Monday to Thursday, 4 till 6 on GB News. Hello, I'm Patrick Christie's. And I'm Mercy Moroki. Make sure that you join us Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. until midday, right here on GB News for To The Point. We're not afraid to talk about the topics that matter to you or the big topics that always matter. We cover absolutely everything from the breaking political stories of the day to law and order, what's going on in the channel. And we're not afraid to hold people to account. We always make sure we include your views on our show. Indeed, if you're thinking it, you can guarantee that we're saying it. So make sure you join the conversation with us 10 a.m. until midday, Monday to Thursday, for To The Point on GB News. I'm Dan Wilson. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wilson tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Yes, hello everybody. Grab your crisps, grab your nuts, pour the drinks. You're in for two hours of great guests and even better stories. This is the one and only Friday Night Feast. Oh, I tell you what, I'm properly in the mood for it this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, everybody. Yes, we've got plenty of lively debate, and I promise we'll have a few laughs along the way, more than a few, I think, between now and 9 o'clock. We'll discuss whether or not the death penalty should be introduced for the murder of a child. That's not one of the things we'll be laughing about, I would like to just point out. I'll also be speaking to the leader of the monster-raving loony party following today's local elections and self-proclaimed fat buster Steve Miller about the looming obesity crisis in the UK. We really are about to become... The fat man of Europe. Ah, oh, we'll have all your favourite regular features, including... Yes, it's Dog of the Week, everybody. We're hoping to find Bella, a six-year-old female lurcher. I think we can all agree, absolutely massive cutie. Her favourite forever home. Bella is a perfect house guest who's looking for a lovely new family. Could you be the lucky household? And... Last week on Challenge Christie's, I flew and landed an aeroplane, and I've not stopped going on about it since. But this time, I did a very different kind of flying. All of that is going to be revealed. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss it. I thought last week's was the best one. It probably was the best one, but this one's on a par, actually, if not better. I'll also read out some of the emails that one of my loyal viewers has sent me this week. It's fair to say they're not always the most complimentary. Isn't that right, Sue Harris? Anyway, that's all on the way between now and nine o'clock. But first, it's the latest headlines brought to you this evening by Tamsin Roberts. Patrick, thank you. Good evening from the GB Newsroom. The Conservatives have lost 450 seats across the UK in the local elections so far, many of which to Labour and the Liberal Democrats. Three key councils in the capital have swung from Tory to Labour, with the Conservatives making only one gain in London. It's a similar picture in Wales, with Labour wins. Meanwhile, in Scotland, the SNP remains the largest party. The Prime Minister has admitted it was a tough night. It's certainly a, a mixed set of results and uh, we've had a tough night in some parts of the, of the country. But on the other hand, in other parts of the country, you're still seeing uh, Conservatives going forward and, uh, and making uh, quite remarkable gains. This is a, a message from voters that what they want us to do above all, one, two and three, is focus on the big issues that matter to them. Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer says the results show his party's made huge improvements. 
This is a massive turning point for the Labour Party. From the depths of 2019, we're back on track now for the general election, showing what the change that we've done, the hard change we've done in the last two years, what a difference it has made. The leader of the Liberal Democrats, Sir Ed Davey, says voters have sent a clear message to the Prime Minister. What began as a tremor in Chesham and Amersham, what became an earthquake in North Shropshire, has now turned into a shockwave across our country that can see this Conservative government come tumbling down. They're saying they've had enough of this Prime Minister. The Labour leader insists he's confident no rules were broken as police open an investigation into allegations of lockdown breaches. Sir Keir Starmer is alleged to have drunk beer with colleagues, including Deputy Leader Angela Rayner, during campaigning for the Hartlepool by-election in April 2021. It was at a time when indoor mixing was banned. Ukrainian officials are accusing Russia of violating a ceasefire as they try to evacuate civilians out of Mariupol. In recent days, the UN has brokered evacuations of hundreds of civilians who've been trapped in the Avostol steelworks, but many are still stuck there. British military intelligence has confirmed Russia is continuing their ground assault on the plant. The Queen has released a lineup of royals who will appear on the Buckingham Palace balcony for her Platinum Jubilee Trooping the Colour celebrations. It doesn't include Prince Andrew, Prince Harry or Meghan, but a spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex has confirmed the couple will attend the Jubilee events, marking the Queen's 70-year reign along with their children. The palace says the monarch's decision to include working royals only was taken after careful consideration. TV, online and DAB Plus Radio, this is GB News. Now it's back to Patrick. Oh, yes. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Friday Night Feast. We've got an absolute rip snorter of a show lined up for you. But, well, I'll tell you what, let's just get stuck straight in. The British public have spoken and they've said, we don't really like any of our political parties. Keir Starmer walking around with a massive maniacal grin on his face like he's just won the World Cup. In reality, he's won Wandsworth and Westminster. And he's had absolutely no real cut through in the red wall whatsoever. Talk about clutching at straws, eh? If he really is so chuffed about it, then it sums up what people have always suspected about good old Keir. That he's London-centric. He's just obsessed with the capital. Keir Starmer goes down like a fart in a lift up north. Why? Because he's dull. He's so wooden that birds try to nest in him. If he was a thing, he'd be shopping at B&Q on a rainy Sunday. In fact, he shouldn't even really be in the job, should he? He should have resigned, surely. Keir was pushing the narrative that any rule breach in public office should be a resigning matter. The whole time, people like me were saying, let it go, Keir, move on, he's not worth it. But he just wouldn't drop it, would he? There have been lies, there's been deceit, and there's been deception. His story about Beergate has changed more times than a chameleon changes colours. All the talk was about whether or not Boris Johnson should be considering his position. But may I politely suggest that Labour should be having to think about a change at the top for them? An Islington lawyer will never do well up north. And it's the north that they really need to win. Boris Johnson and the Tories were predicted to get the kind of spanking that you normally have to pay for in Soho, but... That didn't quite materialise. It wasn't a good night for him, though, to be fair. It's the midterms. The Tories have been in power for years and years. We've had lockdowns. We've had scandals. We've had him being ambushed by cake. I mean, lest we forget, of course. And yet, still, it wasn't a total disaster for him. The Lib Dems have done all right, bless them, but they're nowhere near nationally electable at all. I'll never forget their leader, Ed Davey, breaking his totally virtue-signalling Ramadan fast by eating a slice of bacon... Nice one there, Ed. Someone's really thought that one through, haven't they? They want us to rejoin the EU, and people are just sick of that now. The Greens, they made some gains, but that's probably just because of the environmental fear that's gripping Britain at the moment, as we're constantly told that we'll simultaneously burn and then freeze to death. We have a situation now where Labour, the party of the working class, the party that was supposed to stand up for the little man who worked down the pit in Blackburn, well... Now they're appealing to the wealthy North London Chatterati. And the Tories, of course, supposedly the party of the elite, run by an old Etonian ex-bully club member. Well, they're now more popular with the working class, it would appear. It's all upside down, isn't it? 
But the amount of tweets that I've had from people just like you, the amount of emails saying, I actually didn't vote, or I didn't want to vote for any of them. I held my nose when I went into that polling booth. That's a very common one that's been coming in from you guys. It's astonishing, and it's a real shame. Put simply, nobody really won these local elections. But the British public lost. The British public deserves better. Right, well, look, I thought it's Friday night. We need a bit of light relief. It's all been party gate, beer gate, never ending cycles of election misery and this, that, and the other. So, joining me now is Lord Hope, the leader of the monster raving loony party. That's right, fantastic stuff. How are you, my good man? I'm extraordinarily well, sir. In fact, it's the official monster raving loony party. Ah, sorry. I, yes, am, uh, the, I am the party leader. I am now Britain's longest serving party leader. I've been 22 and a half years. I've just overtaken Clement Attlee. Well, well done you. I mean, that's fantastic. That's good. Um, so, I mean, you, I believe, already held your election victory party on Wednesday. Is that last right? Night. Yes, last night, yes. And, uh, celebrating a bit too early. Did you, how, how, how did you do at the local elections, may I ask? We, we fought 11 seats. Um, we didn't actually win any, although although uh, I, I in, my, in Fleet Town Council in Fleet where I live in Hampshire, I was returned unopposed to the Fleet Town Council. <laughs> That's brilliant. So you're wait, so you're 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 on a town council now. Yes. Brilliant. And so what's all, all, over the, all, all over the country, in fact, the Monster Raven Looney Party are proud to announce we have six councillors. Fantastic. Uh, and can I ask what some of your policies are? Um, policies? What are they? <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. I mean, I, I think you wanted the 99p coin, didn't you? Yes, we did, yeah. 99 bits coin, definitely. Uh, any other um, quirky ones? That's probably a good idea. I mean, um, <clears throat> Richard Branson thinks that's a good idea, so you never know. It was us who, it was us who campaigned for um, passports for pets. Why can't you take your pet abroad for two weeks? With an inoculation from your from the vet with a passport and bring him back after two weeks without going through quarantine. Don't be so loody, says it. But they're doing it now, aren't they? They they are doing it now. So you I mean the official Monster Ravy Looney Party has had a massive impact on the British political yeah, landscape. Yeah. Quite clearly. Yes, yeah. What, what what are some what are some what are some of the more the more famous ideas that you guys have had? You've had the pet passports, obviously, the 99p coin. Didn't you used to want to make footballers play in slippers or something so it would even it out? <laughs> we want we want to make the um the the, the, the London cir circular under, underground a circle. Well, okay. It's not a circle, is it? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, can I ask? Though, uh, look, I think the British public today. This is really the reason why I wanted to get you on. Okay. Apart from the fact that you seem like a great guy, but I think the British public have voted, some of them did anyway, but really the big winner for me here was the rejection of the traditional political parties, the rejection of the personnel, a damning indictment of the quality and calibre of leader of a lot of these parties, and they just don't really like them, I think, the vast majority of the British public. Why do you think that is? Because you strike me as a man who's always had maybe a little bit of disdain for the political establishment. Let me, something, something you said when you first opened up, let me show you this. If you, yeah. if you don't usually vote, then vote unusually, <laughs> vote loony. That makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm sure to some people. Um, yeah, no, no, uh, absolutely. So, but but what, why why did you want to do it? Why did you not, I don't know, become a Tory? Because some of them are loonies as well. Well, because um, um, I left school many, many years ago and I became a rock and roll singer. And I met Screaming Lord Such. He was one of my best friends all through his life. And we started the Monster Raven Looney Party ourselves between us on June the 16th, 1982. And we've been okay. going ever since. And we are Good there, stuff. still there now, and we now hold six council seats up and down the country. We're not doing bad, are we? You're not doing badly at all. 
Uh, and, but you are a tremendous quirk of the British political system. We need people like you. I'll never forget, for example, Tim Farron up in Westmoreland and Lonsdale being returned with a bloke dressed as a carrot behind him. I mean, there was a bin face or whatever he's called. We've got you guys as well. It's okay, a fantastic yeah. buckethead. That's the one, not bin face. It might be bin face as well. Why not? <laughs> Doesn't really matter at this point, does it? But Lord Hope, thank you so, so much. The leader of the official monster raving loony party. An absolute delight to have you on the show. And congratulations <coughs> on actually being a councillor. Well done, my good man. Fantastic stuff. There we go. Right, OK. Well, tonight on my panel, I am delighted to be joined by sports broadcaster Ada McGee, who will remember, a fan favourite last time, who this time has come dressed as an ice cream salesman. <laughs> and comedian <laughs> Sashila Kershi as well. Another regular on TV News. Sorry, mate. We're gonna... It's, it's one right. of those evenings. I know. Right. Uh, first things first, your overall take on the local election results. A bit of a, <coughs> a bit of a damp squib, do you think? Uh, it was a bit of a damp squib, but so it's a weird thing happening. So I'm, I'm in Reigate. I give too much information away of the show. I it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Place. Place. yeah. Nice place. You get lost in Rygate. Yeah. Like, my, sorry, my town and the, uh, the town next to it. Dorking? Uh, mm. Red Hill? Yeah, no, oh, Red Hill, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, to, I'm sorry, apparently there's a slight issue with your microphone, oh. which is going to be rectified immediately. Okay. So I'm going to go to you quickly. Yeah. Sorry, you've not been cancelled already. <laughs> um, so, uh, local election results. Did you, did you bother voting? We like no, I didn't. I've, I've not no. voted in any vote or any election since 2005, apart from last year, the mayoral election. I promise Sean Bailey I'd vote for him. Okay. So I went down, I got off my backside, I went down. Normally I'd just stay at home watching, yeah. uh, watching reruns of El Dorado on, on, <laughs> on UK Gold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, do you remember Marcus Tat? No, you're too young. No, I don't. No, no, no. Anyway, uh, no, listen, I haven't, I, haven't, so I haven't voted for a long time. I didn't vote in any referendum or general election. Right. I didn't see any reason to change that yesterday. Am I surprised by the results? Not particularly. Uh, the Tories will get a kick in as any stand, any sitting government will, yeah. will, will have to go through in the midterm elections. It could have been much, much worse for them. Uh, there's no obvious investment in Labour either in terms of no. people putting their weight behind them. Lib Dems probably gained some. I, I, th I actually think... The Tories could lose seat in waking for granted some of those blue seats around Greater yeah. London, and you can see some of those go to the Lib Dem. Back by popular demand, it's yes, a Yeah, right. sorry. Round two. So no, mm. um, at the polling station, I went down there, and they'd moved it, and, and hadn't been hadn't told. I was told and they'd about done that, that the next town, and I was like, this is a conspiracy I was told theory. About this. Uh, yeah, and it's 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 um, we've got uh, Crispin Blunt. I must say that yeah. right. Yes, 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 uh, yes. yes. Hey, Jeremy Hunt as well. That's not yeah, tempt fate. Yeah. Yeah. That's not yes, tempt fate. You know, off cam and all yeah. that. Uh, but yeah, and I I I do think that there there was less people voting. I know that I went later on in the evening, um, and I think there is a bit of an apathy. Do we know what the turnout was? Uh, I've heard it was as low as about 36 percent, something yeah, I mean, like some, that. I've, some of them in the past have been, in the recent past, been like 28 and 30. It's no, it, it's no, re no. no representation of what how people are going to vote the next election. No, it, it, it's not really. And, and I do think as well that Keir Starmer. Look, I, I, I do stand by it. You know, I, I don't think he's the best one in the world. I just don't think he goes down particularly well up north. And Labour really need to win back. The North. But hey, if you think I'm wrong, get in touch. GBviews at gbnews.uk. Let us know, if you don't mind, who you voted for. Why didn't you vote if you didn't vote? And what's been going on for you? I want to hear what you think about this issue as well. That's gbviews at gbnews.uk. You can also tweet me at gbnews or, of course, at Patrick Christie's. And I'll read out a selection of your comments throughout the evening. But coming up next, it's not a big debate. Earlier today, I got your opinions on one of the week's top stories. Let's have a look. OK, people, it's survey time. Now, today, I want to know whether or not people think that we should bring back the death penalty. This question raises its head all the time, but I want it answered once and for all. It emerges that baby peas vile piece of human detritus mother is set to be released from prison. We've had things like the Bolger killers, for example, Wayne Cousins, terrorists. I want to know whether or not people think we should bring back the death penalty. Let's find out. Um, I think that we shouldn't bring back the death penalty because there are some people that are wrongly accused and wrongly convicted. So if you kill them, then they won't have an opportunity to kill their mm. convictions. I'd feel really uncomfortable being on a jury as well with a death penalty. That would make me feel really, really uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, that would be a step backwards. Um, surely these days we should be able to find better ways of dealing with issues in society. Mm. Yeah, the death penalty, it's not, it's not normal to cut someone's life, uh, yeah. regardless of what the person did. But on the other hand, uh, if they really want a second chance, uh, yeah, there's plenty of things they can do. Really? Okay. 
I must say, I do love the British public, but yet again, there's no conclusive answer here. To kill or not to kill, that is the question. But fear not, people, because when I come back after this very short break, I'm going to be going head-to-head, toe-to-toe in our big debate today. Should we bring back the death penalty? Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events, and I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates, some strong opinions, and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. On radio, they call it the drive time slot, 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. as listeners head home. It's that part of the schedule when the dust of the day's events begin to clarify, and we try to make sense of it for you. Brazier is drive time for radio and TV. It's fast, it's punchy, it's opinionated, there's a brazier angle and a little bit of levity. That's the question. That's two questions, actually. <laughs> That's Brazier, Monday to Thursday, 4 till 6, on GB News. Hello, I'm Patrick Christie's. And I'm Mercy Moroki. Make sure that you join us Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. until midday, right here on GB News for To The Point. We're not afraid to talk about the topics that matter to you or the big topics that always matter. We cover absolutely everything from the breaking political stories of the day to law and order, what's going on in the channel. We're not afraid to hold people to account. We always make sure we include your views on our show. Indeed, if you're thinking it, you can guarantee that we're saying it. So make sure you join the conversation with us 10 a.m. until midday, Monday to Thursday for To The Point on GB News. I'm Dan Wooten. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. On Mark Dolan tonight, my Mark Meets guest is Coronation Street legend Charlie Lawson, known to millions as Northern Irishman Jim McDonald. In the big question with the NHS waiting list spiralling and a collapse in GP services, should we think the unthinkable and privatise the NHS? In my panel, Radio and Fleet Street legend Mike Porky Parry. And in my big opinion, Boris has proved his critics wrong by surviving a local election's bloody nose. See you at nine. Welcome back to Friday Night Feast. Now, the mother of baby P, Tracy Connolly, could be released from prison within weeks. I know, I know, I know that this is going to get you all very, very wound up. And don't hold back here, people, OK? As far as I'm concerned, she's basically human to try us and we should be getting stuck in in the inbox. GBviews at GBnews.uk. So that's the mother of baby P, Tracy Connolly, who could be released from prison within weeks after the parole board rejected a government challenge against its ruling. So she was jailed in 2009, as if you're not already familiar. I can sense you all already shouting at your television screen screens, but after admitting causing or allowing the death of 17-month-old son, little Peter, at home in Tottenham, North London, in 2007, known as Baby P, he'd suffered more than 50 injuries at the hands of his mother, Connolly, as well as her boyfriend, Stephen Barker. And their lodger and his brother, Jason Owen Connolly, was freed on licence in 2013, but recalled to prison in 2015 after it was found that she'd sent indecent images of herself to people obsessed with her notoriety. Sound like a lovely bunch, this lot, don't they? The parole board considered her case for a third time in November 2019, following previous reviews in 2015 and 2017. Anyway, they refused to release her on either one of those occasions or move her to an open prison, but should we actually reintroduce the death penalty for child killers. That's what I want to know this evening, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Don't be shy, get in touch. I know that it kicks off every single time that we talk about a crime like this, and all of you always, loads of you anyway, loads of you anyway, get in touch to say, oh, I think we should have the death penalty. So, come on, tell me why, tell me what you think. Anyway, gbviews at gbnews.uk. But tonight on my panel, I am, of course, joined by sports broadcaster Aidan McGee. I've got comedian Sajila Kershey, so thank you very, very much. And I'm joined by the wonderful, the wonderful, 
called Benjamin Lochnane, who is a research fellow at the Bow Group and, let's be honest, a fan favourite here at GB News as well. Benjamin, I'll start with you, please, my good man. Should we bring back the death penalty for child killers? Yeah, no, I absolutely think we should. But my principle on the death penalty, and if you look at the polling, it supports this, is that people tend to be a lot more in favour of it when you frame it in the, in the sense of, should Wayne Cousins receive the death penalty? Or exactly. should the murder of Baby P receive the death penalty? And people then go, yeah, absolutely. But when you ask the question, should we bring back the death penalty in the abstract, people tend to be more against it. I think that's where the difficulty lies. It's really in a way that we talk about the issue. People don't like the principle. They don't like the idea of the state having the ability to kill individuals or citizens because that's not, frankly, it's you know not a palatable idea. But when you frame it around a person who has done something absolutely abhorrent beyond all reproach, people do start to have a bit more sympathy for it because, mm. frankly, these people are not ordinary citizens. They're not ordinary human beings. They go beyond what it is to be human. And they do things which are so disgraceful that I think, frankly, there should be a faculty within law for those really extreme cases where we can say, in this particular circumstance, this person has gone beyond what is humane. Yeah, OK, I'll, I'll bring my panel in as well. Look, Aidan, I suppose, start with you. Your, your thoughts on this? These arguments aren't particularly new, but I suspect they're the reasons why we've never gone the whole hog and actually reintroduced the death penalty. First of all, do you actually know for certain that you've got the right person? Now, what will inevitably happen is that we'll have to go through a process because we can't just nominate that we're going to kill or decide, decree that we're going to kill somebody on account of committing a crime and then find out two or three years later that actually it wasn't the right person to do it. So what will inevitably happen is that we'll get a death row situation. You could find a situation where an, a, an offender is on death row or our equivalent of death row for 15 to 20 years, which is basically amounts to, well, probably two-thirds of a life sentence. Okay. Then there's the issue of, you know, there's other issues around it as well. Yes, there's the, it's the, the discomfort with the, the, the state having the power to that decide power, if somebody yeah. is, uh, is, is going to be able to, to die. And also, I, I do see the other side of the argument. I do think it would act as, as a deterrent, but I also believe that sometimes these people are just so depraved mm. that even the death penalty as a deterrent would not be enough to stop them doing what they do. Yeah, so, you know, I'll throw it over to you. It is a tricky one, this. I think we've heard some pretty good cases rare on both sides mm. of this argument. Where are you on this? Oh, my God. So, um, OK, as a mother, mm. I just think... When I hear these stories, and this one really particularly yeah. affected me and my Shocker. son at the time, um, because he turned around and said, oh, mummy, I don't want you to have a boyfriend because what if you get an unhealthy interest in <laughs> online gambling and you won't notice that your boyfriend's trying to kill... You know, is, is interested in Nazis and knives and trying to kill me, which is really oh. profound for a young... You know, he was a child uh, at the time. And um, why, you know, she, it, I blame the mother more than I blame the boyfriend because she allowed her son, her child, to be in that position. She is vile. She is evil. Yeah. Do I agree with the death penalty? No. I think, you know, the prison system does its job really well. They don't like child killers. They're the bottom of the rung of the ladder. Throw them in the prison and just say, look, have your way with them. It's, it's an interesting, another interesting point, a fantastic discussion. This Benjamin, obviously, I'll lob it back over to you now. I suppose one of the things when you look at, like, like Fred West, Harold Shipman, I'm sure you could name a few others as well, who've been given life sentences and then killed themselves. It's like they want to die. So why give them that satisfaction? Well, I don't think it is satisfaction that's the matter. It's not about whether they have happy lives or sad lives or whether they want to die or not die. It really just comes down to a matter of justice. Right. You know, justice needs to be done and be seen to be done. And when someone commits such a disgraceful crime, and not only are they likely to go on and reoffend, but they show absolutely no remorse whatsoever for doing what they've done. They don't even show a, a recognition of the fact that they've done something abhorrent and evil. They are only likely to reoffend. They're completely honest about what they've done. They make no bones about it. Yeah. I do think there are cases where you can say it doesn't matter what they want or don't want. It doesn't matter how happy or humane these situations are. It comes down to the fact that they have gone beyond what is humane and, they, uh, and there needs to be a, 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 an extreme in the law for those sorts of cases. Now, I'm not suggesting that we bring back the death penalty for every Tom, Dick and Harry who commits any particular crime. It should be very, very rare. It well, go on, name, name those cases then, because you've got, you've got some obvious ones, Ben, haven't you? You've got the child killers, you've got terrorism, for example, maybe. Uh, are these the kind of ones yeah. that we're talking about for you? Well, I, you know, of course, we can't go into every single specific one, yeah, but yes, yeah. things like people who abuse and murder and uh, or children in particular, uh, or people like Wayne Cousins, who yeah. uh, will have committed that crime in a premeditated way over the course of hours and at no point showed any sign of, of regret or remorse and gone on to try and cover it up and all the rest of it. You know, there are these individual cases, and I think that's where people tend to agree with it. Now, the one reservation I have is that I don't really trust this government 
to have that sort of power because I'm not sure that they would make the right decisions. I don't know if they would pick the right cases. I don't really trust. If we've seen the way that they uh, treat, you know, for example, they will treat terrorists with a with a light hand, and then they will go and come down hard on people over things like lockdown. They seem to have no sense yeah. of proportion in the law. And so I do have my reservations about this government in terms of their ability to deal out justice. But then that extends to all justice. That's not a question about the death penalty. That's a question about whether this government should be in control of the law. The other thing is, Patrick, it, it, I don't think somebody who has their life cut short immediately on, upon being found guilty is suffering enough. No, I agree. That's the thing. I mean, you, 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 if you did a poll of, of 100 people and say, look, do you want to be executed tomorrow on account of committing a crime or do you want to do 25 years in prison? I, I mean, I think it would be close. I'm not saying it would be a landslide for either side, but I would suggest that quite a few people, possibly the majority, would choose instant death rather than sitting in a prison for 25 years and sometimes even longer because some people don't... Yeah. They apply for parole and don't, mm. don't eventually get it. They literally spend the rest of their days in prison. I think most people would, would choose a, a quick out. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Aidan. And also, can I just say that you've got to have the, the think of the person that's going to be uh, executing effectively. I mean, that's got to take a kind of person. That's not a job anybody wants to do. Nobody says, I want to grow up. I and mean, if they do say they want to grow up and be someone who yeah. executes, that's an issue in itself. So well, I'm, yeah, I'm very concerned about... It's what a strange kind of line of work, yes. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's a strange line of work, yeah, definitely. <laughs> certain, right. certain type of person. But, Benjamin, can I ask... Look, a bit of a weird one. We, you and I seem to gravitate towards having very strange discussions whenever we, we pop on the shows together. I think we once had a debate about whether or not we should nuke Paris. But... Um, <laughs> But on this one now, I, I mean, look, how would you do it, Benjamin? We bring back the death penalty. What would you do? Hanging or are we talking about something, I don't know, more sinister? I think there's probably more humane ways of doing it now than just going straight to hanging or, or the guillotine or something. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you've got the lethal injection. I think the lethal injection is the, the sort of go-to nowadays. Um, but, you know, it's not really necessarily about the method for me. It's about the principle. And it, it, again, you know, we were talking before about the idea of, you know, it's worse for people to languish in prison for years than to be killed. Well, for me, it's not about punishing them. It's not about seeing them suffer. It's about making sure that they have no opportunity to reoffend and that they're not released back into, into the true. public at some point in the future. I, because yeah. you can give someone a whole life sentence and then another government comes in and they get released on a technicality. <laughs> well, well, well that, 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 is, that is a really good point. And that actually leads me very neatly. Almost like we planned it, Benjamin. Fantastic stuff. This. Just on to, to this point, we're a bit pressed for time now. But, Aidan, I'll just stop with you. you know, there's a wider question here, isn't there, about, about us letting these people out. It's one thing to have a debate about the death penalty. OK, fine. But, you know... If someone like the, the mother of baby P, for example, yeah. I mean, why, why on earth is she getting parole? The, the, the Bulger killers, OK, maybe they were children, maybe that's a bit different, but still, you know? Well, they're like, they've actually, re in both cases well, you mentioned now, I think they've re-offended. Re yeah. Um, but, yeah, that, look, that, OK, that's, that's different. Not all cases are, are like that, but I would also say that, you know, in playing devil's advocate here yeah. against my point, there's yeah. also the issue around the expense of keeping someone in prison. For that long a period of time, and as well as their scope yep. to, to reoffend, so I'm I'm against it in you know mostly, but I think there is a case coming the other way as as I get and, and this is distinctly. yeah, and, and this is this is why it's such a why it's such a, a, an interesting topic really. Do, do you think Sheila that we are a bit soft when it comes to things like this? You know, the idea that this woman now will be back out on the streets. I don't know this for a fact, but I, I don't I, I don't think we can stop her from reproducing again. I'm not sure if we no. if we can. You know, I mean. No, we well, tricky, if she's it? out on the streets, we all know what she looks like. Yeah. Um, so, you know... To be fair, that She's not, not going to be safe. Public she's justice. not going to be safe. But I, I still think that the idea of, of you know, uh, like, killing someone, that is wrong for any civil society. I think we're going to go down a very, very tricky route. We don't want, we don't want that in here. I think if you had a referendum on it, most people would decide yeah, against it, actually. I agree. I don't well, think that would have been the case maybe 30 or 40 years ago, but I do think it would be the case now. OK, good stuff. Well, look, Benjamin, I'll just give you the very, very last word. Um, do you think that in our lifetime, we'll see the return to the death penalty because some people see it as a return to the dark ages. Well, I'm not so sure if we will, but uh, then again, I'm not really, you know, again, I argue against my own point to some extent <laughs> here. I'm not really sure I want to see this government in its current state have yes. power. I think it's something that as a principle in justice within law is a good thing. We, we, you know, we're talking about the principle um, and I think that you need to have a healthy society in order to have that in, in place. And I don't think we're a healthy enough society to have that. But I do think that were we a healthier society and did uh, and if we had more sort of moral uh, like baseline in our society, I think it would be a good thing. And I think as a principle, it should stand.
OK, look, good stuff. Benjamin, thank you so, so much. Benjamin Lockley there, research fellow at the Bow Group, and, of course, my steam panel, who will be with us throughout the show. How do you feel about this, though, at home, ladies and gents? Let me know. GBviews at gbnews.uk. Would you bring back the death penalty? Are there specific crimes that you would bring it back for? We're talking child killers, talking paedophiles, you're talking uh, terrorists, I suppose, people like this. Or, actually, are you completely against it? There are some interesting figures in America that appear to show that in the states where they do have the death penalty, actually, there's no less gun crime or things like this, the things you could get sentenced to death for. So there is a question as to whether or not it is a deterrent, but let me know what you think. GBviews at gbnews.uk. Right, now, we're going to go to a break, but in just a couple of minutes, we'll bring you this week's Challenge Christie's. It's an absolute humdinger. But ahead of that, here's a little question for you, OK? The device called the Flyboard, OK, I think we've given away what I'm doing, broke a uh. Guinness World Record for flying <laughs> roughly how many feet? 2,345 feet, 7,388 feet, or 15,432 feet. I'll bring you the answer and tell you why I'm asking about flyboarding in just a couple of minutes. But look, if you at home like to see me make a fool out of myself, wear something ridiculous and get hurt, then you're in luck. I'll see you soon. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubry, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubry, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. On radio, they call it the drive time slot, 4pm until 6pm as listeners head home. It's that part of the schedule when the dust of the day's events begin to clarify and we try to make sense of it for you. Brazier is drive time for radio and TV. It's fast, it's punchy, it's opinionated, there's a brazier angle and a little bit of levity. That's the question. That's two questions, actually. <laughs> That's Brazier, Monday to Thursday, 4 till 6 on GB News. Hello, I'm Patrick Christie's. And I'm Mercy Moroki. Make sure that you join us Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. until midday, right here on GB News for To The Point. We're not afraid to talk about the topics that matter to you or the big topics that always matter. We cover absolutely everything, from the breaking political stories of the day to law and order, what's going on in the channel. We're not afraid to hold people to account. We always make sure we include your views on our show. Indeed, if you're thinking it, you can guarantee that we're saying it. So make sure you join the conversation with us. 10 a.m. until midday, Monday to Thursday, for To The Point on GB News. I'm Dan Wooten. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Welcome back to Friday Night Feast. Now, before the break, I asked you this question. The device called the Flyboard just broke a Guinness World Record for flying roughly how many feet? A, 2,345. B, 7,388. Or C, 15,432. And the answer is... B, 7,388 feet. That's 1.4 miles. That's impressive stuff. And that brings me nicely onto this. Yes, it's time now for Challenge Christie's. It's the part of the show where you, my loyal viewers and listeners, friends, almost like family in a way, really, sent me a challenge and I proved that I can do it better than anyone. We've had boxing. We all know that. We've had Irish dancing. We've had show jumping, a particular favourite of mine. Wrestling, landing a plane, you name it. I've done the absolute lot of it. And if you've got a challenge for me, please email me, patrick at gbnews.uk or tweet me at Patrick Christie's. And I promise you that I've got some crackers coming up in the next few weeks. But now, it's what you've all been waiting for. No more dither, no more delay. I'd say this is one of my favourite challenges I've actually done so far. In fact, yeah, last week I landed the plane. That will take some beating, to be fair. But just have a look at this. 
Well, we meet again, everybody. Hello, welcome to the latest instalment of Challenge Christie's with me, Challenge Christie's, where you, the viewer or the listener, challenge me to do something and I just do it magnificently as per usual. Now, I'm at a place called Action Water Sports near Romney Marsh. I thought Romney Marsh was a footballer, but apparently I've got a few letters wrong there. And I'm keen to, to know what's going on. They've made me feel right at home, actually. Look at this. Oh, you love this. Nice touch, actually. Anchor. Man. See, anchor. Man. Yeah, no, fine. OK, lost on some people. But anyway... Let's have that little letter then, I believe. It's got my... The big reveal, the big reveal. Let's have a look. Ooh, OK. OK. Flyboarding. Right, well, uh, I suppose it's about time that we really find out what on earth flyboarding is. I've never heard of it personally, so... This looks like where I would check in, I think, so... Brilliant stuff. Ah, hello. How are you? You all right? Hiya, I'm Natalie. Nice to meet you, You're Natalie. Welcome. Thank you very much. And so, I suppose to start with, what on earth is flyboarding? OK, so a flyboarding involves um, putting a board on your feet um, right. that is powered by water jets. And the plan is we're going to come out of the lake and fly, hover above the lake, fly into the sky. Flying into the sky? Yeah. Human flying? Okay. Powered by water. Powered by water. OK. Uh, a bit like, um, like Iron Man. Exactly like Iron Man. Exactly like Iron yeah. Man. Okay, all right. And this is definitely legal. Hundred percent. Right. Okay. Good. Um, how far above the lake are we talking? Do we think? Well, it's got an eighteen meter hose. Start small and build up. Okay. Good. But I won't be getting wet on it, will I? No. Okay. No. No. No wetness. Good stuff. All right. Fantastic. Do I have to sign a waiver or anything? Yeah, I've got your waiver on the system. You're all checked in. Okay. Uh, so next, we need to put you in your wetsuit. My wetsuit. <laughs> right. Okay. Good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I've already eyed up this one. I think it'd be quite nice. <laughs> Absolutely no chance. Why not? Uh, it's been on the small side. Well, just what? Blues. Go down, down the road. Blues, nice. Blues, lovely. Our favourite colours. Quick greens. My favourite colour. Why are you still going that way? They're getting. I don't like this. This extra large one. Extra large. That's a bit rich, isn't it? Perfect. All right then. Ah, ah. One leg. Okay. See how cold my feet already are. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I've actually lost, actually lost ten pounds in three weeks. I'm feeling really great about my stuff. Okay, there. Oh. Simon, nice to meet you. How, how are, are you? you? Flyboard instructor for the day. Good so, stuff. Uh, breathe in. There we go. And uh, what people don't realise is as well, just for everyone at home, these have got a lot of natural padding just around the midriff area. I I'm actually ripped at the moment. This is this is just the suit, isn't it? Exactly. Thank you. Let me get you a life jacket. Okay, good. Guys, I've got a feeling that... I've got a feeling I might actually be going in the water. Does anyone else think that? So the life jacket's only for people who are going in the water, though, isn't it? Uh, well, you are, we will be going in the water, that's right, yeah. We're a water sports centre, so... Can we meet in the middle and not go in the water? Uh, not really, to be honest. I it's mean... just, you know that lovely Natalie on reception? She, was, she wasn't... I wasn't adamant about me going in the water. Well, we're an activity centre. Activity means getting involved. I feel a million dollars. Right. OK, so look, what now? So you're going to fly in the air like a super superhero, basically, powered by water jets. But you start off in the water like a salmon. Like a salmon. Like a salmon going S home. Like a salmon. They swim upstream and... Pretty much like that. They look great while they do salmon it. Salmon to superhero, zero to hero in about five minutes. Or OK, all right. Just before we get cracking, can I just make a quick phone call? Is that, is that OK? <laughs> Hello. Hi, Mum. You're right. We're fine, darling. How are you? Yeah, good. No, good, good, good. Look, I'm not really actually. Um, I'm about to do this challenge, Christie's thing. I strap like a jetpack to me. Tell me, can't do it. They're threatening me with the sack if I don't do it. Tell me, your mother says you can't do it. <laughs> they made me sign a waiver, right? It's got pictures of people popping their shoulders out and all sorts. Oh, stop being silly now. Are you serious? Do you think you could call a bomb threat into the centre or something? No, don't be stupid. You've already done it, haven't you? No, I've not already done it, actually. And are you covered for insurance? What's insurance? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm bang up for this. Let's do it. OK, so, Patrick, here we are yes. uh, in the Romney Marsh Riviera, as we like to call it. Yes, sir. But like anyway, it. here's the flyboard, <laughs> connected to a 150-horsepower jet ski, 18-metre hose. We're going to start the session with a little familiarisation. Yeah, and, this is uh, nuts, anyway. Go on, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to put the boots on, you're going to gently get into the water, and we're going to lay it on our tummy, OK, with our feet out the back and our hands by our side. A bit like a salmon. How does that sound? Yeah, fine. OK, perfect. So, if you want to just uh, sit yourself down here, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> 
Can I have not done some stretches as we call it? An athlete like you? Do I not just sink in this? It's well over. So those, uh, those red parts are actually flotation devices. Okay. So once you're in the water with it, you'll be fine. So just sit there a minute. It is a bit nippy, mate. Well, it's England. It's May. In, this is England, yes. OK, Patrick, you ready to go? Yeah, why not? Let's have it. OK, so anchor man or superhero? Let's find out. Let's find out. Patrick, just plop yourself into the water on your tummy for me. Face first, yeah. Yeah! Yes, that's bracing. And breathe. OK. That's it, nice and easy. Just head over to the other side of the lake for me. Oh, it's really cold on my back! Oh, I'm freezing! The water's about 15. Loads of kids in last weekend. Come on, Patrick. It'll be fine. Oh, OK, oh. fantastic. So, Patrick, now, you should bend your knees up and stand on those boots. Whoa! Gently, gently. That's it, straight leg. OK, I've just got a straight leg. And lock out. Oh. Oh. I'll get this, I will get the hang of this. Good effort, mate. Hang on, hang on. Head up, head up, head up, head up. What's the fuck? Watch me in the air, relax. Relax your shoulders down. Ah. Ah. Now relax, relax. Oh. 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 Yes! Yes! It's alright. So it's good to stop now for a minute for him to have a rest. Yeah. Uh, process what's just gone on. However, this yeah. time, the challenge is to uh, maintain a, sta a steady state of uh, hover for five seconds. Right? Well, I've got to hover solidly for five seconds. Five seconds. That is okay. So that's the challenge, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to hover solidly above the water in the air for five seconds. Remember, keep your eyes up. Look forwards all the time, OK? And remember, have fun, relax, enjoy yourself. Okay. Yeah. Relax your shoulders, relax your shoulders, relax your shoulders. Relax your shoulders, relax your shoulders, relax your shoulders. Relax yes. Your shoulders. yes, yes, yes! Chest up, chest up. There you go, relax, relax. Smile. Come on, think about the key points, okay? Relax your shoulders, relax, relax, head up, head up, head up, head up. Okay. Okay. Now bend your knees, relax your arms. Head up. Yes! This is the one! Yes! Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, Challenge Christie is complete! Oh, I had so much fun doing that, it was unbelievable. But uh, yeah, that was, of course, oh, just fantastic. It's one of the best things I've ever done. These challenges are getting better and better, so please do keep them coming. If you're listening on GB News Radio, make sure that you watch that challenge right now on YouTube. And also, of course, the GB News Facebook page is certainly uh, raised a few eyebrows with my panel. I'll be going to them shortly. But joining me now is Simon Rain, British water ski coach, GB team member, and also managing director of Action Water Sports <laughs> in Lidcote. And, and, and honestly, just what a mighty fine chap you are. Thank you so much for giving me one of the best days of my life. Oh, it's really strange, really, when you see the footage back. I. I seem to remember being a lot better than that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Patrick, you're very kind. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you did a fantastic job. Uh, you're such a good sport, and it was actually a really good afternoon for us here at our centre in, in Kent. Thank you. That's all right. Well, look, mate, I, I want to get you on. Just, it, I can't... I, I mean, I think we saw a bit in that footage, especially the drone footage, but you've got an absolutely cracking setup there, haven't you? So just run our viewers and our listeners through what goes on at Act Action Water Sports. 
Well, we're a multi-activity water sports centre, so uh, we do a lot of uh, water ski, wakeboard, uh, paddle boarding. We also have an aqua park, uh, which is fun for all the family and, and all the kids. Um, we're, we're looking forward to this weekend, the weather really breaking, uh, and we've got a busy schedule. We've got some spaces for this weekend, but a busy schedule. Uh, water's warming up nicely, and uh, yeah, all the activities we do are uh, all available this weekend. Uh, so hopefully Patrick can come down again and show us some uh, more magic. Yeah, oh, mate, honestly, don't get me started. I'm going to be doing this on my days off, 100%. But um, just in terms of flyboarding, look, I'd not really heard of it before. You were obviously operating in this world, so I'm sure you've obviously known about it for a very long time. But <laughs> just run our, run our, our viewers and our listeners through it, exactly kind of what it is. And, I mean, you can, you, I mean, obviously, I couldn't do anything amazing on these, but people can do some incredible <laughs> things on them, can't they? <laughs> they? They can indeed, yes. I mean, it was invented by a French guy uh, who was a jet ski and powerboat racer and there's a there's a huge scene around the world of uh, very high level displays of which they may come knocking on your door Patrick at, at <laughs> any moment so be aware of that um, so lots of uh, very high level displays in places like Dubai and what have you we've had a flyboard for uh, I think nine or ten years now um, so uh, yeah we've, we've gained a lot of useful experience over those times yeah indeed I think you were saying you've even had uh, music videos that you've you've been shot in as well. I think something like that you're saying to me. But no, absolutely cracking. I must say it's it, it's just tremendous fun, yeah, unbelievable fun. I'm glad that something like that exists. But thank you very much. And um, I think if you do, you want to do you think you want to give our viewers a, just a quick a quick look around? Did you or something? I believe, or is that what you were going to do? You got, yeah, go on. That's right, just let me step outside here. So um, we've got our uh, our water ski boats sat here waiting. Uh, all of our prep has been done. You can see in the background we do fun rides, bananas, and there's our aqua park in the corner, uh, all waiting, ready for everyone to come over the weekend. So it's a bit grey at the moment, but the forecast is for it to clear out and the temperatures to be in the 20s in the sunny southeast here. So we're really looking forward to a great weekend. Good luck, Simon. Thank you so much. And thank you yes again for giving me one of the best days of my life. Unbelievable that. Simon Rain there, British water ski coach, GB team member as well, all round good guy, and of course the MD of Action Water Sports in Lid Kent. Would you would you like to give that a go, do you think? I would just be as bad as you. <laughs> uh, the problem I have is that I can't actually see how it's meant to happen. No, you did, because you didn't it. do it kind of... I, I mean, what, uh, was there one where you, where you actually got off the ground a little there bit? There was, yeah. Bit? I mean, there were a couple, there were a couple, but I mean... That felt like I was off the ground then for about a minute. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you're so focused. But actually, I, on, it's the weirdest thing. So, so to start with, so to, to start with, you have to stand to so your 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 underwater. So you obviously, so you bring your legs in front of you, and you have to stand bolt straight and everything yeah. clenched, everything clenched. And then the second you get out of the water, you've got to relax, got to relax everything. But you just, it's honestly, it's like, you know when you've had a 15 pints at a wedding? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you're completely all over the place. But, I, um, prefer, I prefer a cocktail, but... Well, naturally, yeah, no, <laughs> I, absolutely. You look like you'd be making the cocktails and that. Uh, but, uh, no, so, uh, oh, that, was, that was the funniest thing <laughs> I have ever seen. That was hilarious. But also, I loved when he kept saying, Oh, uh, can you can you just relax your arms? Relax like, your arms, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> right. so how, how long? When, when ah. you see you fall into the water, yeah. we saw that multiple times. How long between <laughs> yes, each you go? Does it, does it take about half an hour to get you back? No, up again? no, no. To be fair, no, it doesn't. So you've got to flip on your front, which is not easy when you're wearing yeah. those things. And obviously the jetpacks are in your are in your feet. Yeah. So you flip on your front, so you're being pushed from behind, and then you've got to turn your body and basically do a big loop around, not around that lake, but a, a bit yeah. of it to come back facing the. The jetty, but honestly, it's the weirdest feeling. It's the weird, but I would highly recommend it. But how's it? I don't see how it's meant to work. Are you meant to be able to on stilts for a period of time. Oh and that's yeah, where you people, get the can, people can do flips. People can. Well, I, I must. Oh, have you seen anybody doing it properly? No. Right. Well, what do you mean, man? I mean, I, I demonstrate. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Obviously. I know. I, but, I know. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, sorry. No. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. I'll let you off. Um, <laughs> but no, it, it is a great feeling. It's a tremendous feeling. I would highly recommend it. Right. Okay. Well, look tonight uh, on my panel, obviously, as you just seen there, Ada McGee, the wonderful Ada McGee, and comedian Sajila. Kershey, of course, that's uh, <laughs> equally wonderful. But um, uh. but there we go. What 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 what? What are you laughing at? The auto cue that you just missed. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, any for anyone who thinks this is a slick operation here, and that I'm in total command of the technology and indeed the running order, well, the illusion's been shattered. 
<laughs> Regular viewers and listeners will know that as well as the weekly challenges that you come up with, I've set myself my own challenge. We're back on track. I've got to lose one and a half stone before I perform with the Dream Boys. That's male strippers. Yes, it is indeed. There we go. Look at me, an officer <laughs> and indeed a gentleman. So, two weeks ago, you saw me strut my stuff with these male strippers. I think it was three weeks ago, actually. And if you're watching GB News on TV or our YouTube channel, then I'm sure you'll agree I've got some pretty good moves. But uh -huh. when it came to the big moment, well, look, I bottled it. You can see me now. I bottled it. And I'm determined to get slimmer and weigh myself every single Friday. Right, so when I started, I was 15 stone 8 pounds, actually, three weeks ago. But check out what happened earlier today. Now, I'm a newsreader here at GB News, but cunningly, I also moonlight as a personal trainer. I hear that Patrick has been slacking a little bit, so let's just go see if he needs a bit of motivation. <gasps> 100, Patrick 101, 102. What are you 100, doing? I've just been... Don't even give me 20. Gosh. What, or, or what press-ups? Press-ups, now. Flipping it. Uh, one, two, Four. three. Get what? that ribcage down. I haven't got a ribcage. 20 more. 20 more? Keep going. Gosh. You're useless. Oh. You're soft. <laughs> Get that bum up. Okay. And up. Yes. Oh. And again. Down. Yes. Again. And up. Get that chest right down. Down. Oh. And up. Nice. OK. Down. down. How many of these do we have to do? And up. 20. 20? <laughs> 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 Oh, there we now go. we've broken into a joint. No, there we steady, go. There we steady go. Steady no, I think, I think a little more. I think a little more. What? Well, let's keep going, shall we? Oh, come on. Come on, Patrick. Oh, God, let's okay. go faster. No, 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 no! no. <laughs> oh, oh, it's been over the floor. Hit that if you need. Oh, oh, stop, stop, stop. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well oh. done. Well done. I'm proud of you, dude. Proud of you. Oh, gosh, give me back pain. I've <laughs> got back pain. Okay. Is that it? You're an amazing runner. <sighs> stick, you know, stick okay. with your strengths. Thank you. <laughs> okay, right. Probably time for me to get weighed. This is the least favourite part of my week. That's right, it's weigh-in time, where every single week, like a zoo animal, I get on the scales, and everyone around the office looks at me, laughs, they've been shouting at me for eating, I tried to eat some carbs before, someone took it off me, and anyway, I've had him sacked. Right, I see the damage. What's it gonna... Oh, hey, there you go! Ah, 14.12, okay, all right. So, I have now lost a pound and a half in two weeks, which is shockingly bad, actually. But overall, because I'm a big picture kind of guy, ten and a half pounds is the start. And it's all for charity. It is indeed all for charity. Three weeks ago, we launched the Just Giving page to raise money for the mental health charity Mind as I continue my weight loss journey. And I want you to go to that right now, if you can, actually. Justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash challenge Christie's. We've got 6,600 in the kitty already. That's justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash challenge Christie's. We want to hit 50k, okay? And we're doing it not just for me to lose weight and this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. For Nathan Dunn, who regular viewers will know who this is, but I'll just fill you in if you don't. Now, Nathan is walking barefoot from John O'Groats to Land's End, setting a world record. He reckons he's also just sleeping in a tent every night. He reckons it will take him a couple of months, right? And he's doing it to raise money for mine. So we thought we'd hop on board with it. Look. I think that is a tremendously worthy cause. I will never stop banging on about this. Male mental health is something that isn't spoken about enough in this country. Every single day, 12 men take their own lives, and suicide is the single biggest killer of men. Under the age of 45, we've got record waiting lists, all of this stuff. Please, 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 if you can, I know times are tough. I know there's a cost of living crisis. I know there's a fuel shortage, uh, yada, yada, yada. But if you just got a couple of quid, right, justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash challenge Christie's, please, if you can, let's try and save some lives together, OK? And I've been blown, blown away by your generosity, of course. Every penny that you donate will go to this tremendous, tremendous cause. So, yes, bear in mind, of course, that Nathan Dunn is walking barefoot from John O'Groats to Land's End. Have you got a couple of quid? It would be nice. Just give me.com forward slash fundraising forward slash challenge Christie's. But now, it's time for this. 
Yes, post-person, Pat, just the right side of copyright law here, where I read out some of your messages. Max been on. He says, how quick they forget the UK government paid for and instigated the dishing out of funds mm. to see the UK through the pandemic so the Welsh Labour and SNP could play politics with this and then they get the votes. People are so easily led. Uh, uh, basically, yeah, making a point there about the local elections. Carmen's been on. Carmen says, I would have voted for the monster raving loony party if they'd been on my ballot paper. I think that's quite a common mm -hmm. thing, that actually. Maybe we should stand for them. Anyway, mm -hmm. Rory says, I didn't vote. Classic this, Rory. Loads of this coming through to me. I didn't vote. There were no elections in my ward. Well, I suppose there is that, to be fair. Adrian says, they need to be in prison for a whole life sentence and never release. This is child killers we're talking about. Our oh, big debate on the death penalty. And that they can't be in society anymore. The death penalty is a way out of it. There you go. All right, OK, well, look, thank you very much for everyone who's been getting in touch. There's loads coming your way, absolutely loads coming your way. Where's that first hour gone after the break? Is Britain really on the way to becoming... The fat man of Europe, the fattest nation in Europe. I think I can relate. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates and strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. On radio, they call it the drive time slot, 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. as listeners head home. It's that part of the schedule when the dust of the day's events begin to clarify, and we try to make sense of it for you. Brazier is drive time for radio and TV. It's fast, it's punchy, it's opinionated, there's a brazier angle and a little bit of levity. That's the question. That's two questions, actually. <laughs> That's Brazier, Monday to Thursday, 4 till 6, on GB News. Hello, I'm Patrick Christie's. And I'm Mercy Moroki. Make sure that you join us Monday to Thursday, 10am until midday, right here on GB News for To The Point. We're not afraid to talk about the topics that matter to you or the big topics that always matter. We cover absolutely everything, from the breaking political stories of the day to law and order, what's going on in the channel. We're not afraid to hold people to account. We always make sure we include your views on our show. Indeed, if you're thinking it, you can guarantee that we're saying it. So make sure you join the conversation with us. 10am until midday, Monday to Thursday, for To The Point on GB News. I'm Dan Woodson. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV, where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Woodson tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Welcome back, everybody, to Friday Night Feast with me, Patrick Christie's. And if you're only just tuning in, where the heck have you been? You've missed me taking on my latest challenge, Christie's. This week it was flyboarding, but don't worry, it'll be on all of our social media pages. Head to GB News' Facebook and YouTube pages right now to watch that. But in the next hour, we'll discuss whether Britain will become Europe's fattest nation by 2033. A nation of trundling fatties, a nation of lard asses. Are we really going to be the fat man of Europe? There's, of course, the weirdest stories from the last seven days from round your parts as well. And we'll also try to rehome a rescue dog of the week. Reliably informed, this one doesn't bite. Anyway, that's all after these news headlines brought to you this evening by the wonderful Tamsin Roberts. Patrick, thank you. Good evening from the GB Newsroom. The Conservatives have lost more than 450 seats so far across the UK in the local elections, many to Labour and the Liberal Democrats. Three key councils in the capital have swung from Tory to Labour, with Conservatives making only one gain in London. It's a similar picture in Wales, whilst the SNP remains the largest party in Scotland. And in Northern Ireland, Sinn Féin has won the majority of first preference votes at 29%, with 
the DUP second at 21%. Boris Johnson has admitted it was a tough night for him. It's certainly a, a mixed set of results and uh, we've had a tough night in some parts of the, of the country. But on the other hand, in other parts of the country, you're still seeing uh, Conservatives going forward and, uh, and making uh, quite remarkable gains. But this is a, a message from voters that what they want us to do above all, one, two and three, is focus on the big issues that matter to them. Well, opposition leaders, including Labour's Sir Keir Starmer and Liberal Democrat Sir Ed Davey, say the results have sent a clear message to the Prime Minister. This is a massive turning point for the Labour Party. From the depths of 2019, we're back on track now for the general election, showing what the change that we've done, the hard change we've done in the last two years, what a difference it has made. What began as a tremor in Chesham and Amersham, what became an earthquake in North Shropshire, has now turned into a shockwave across our country that can see this Conservative government come tumbling down. In other news, a Labour leader insists he's confident no rules were broken as police open an investigation into allegations of lockdown breaches. Sir Keir Starmer is alleged to have drunk beer with colleagues, including Deputy Leader Angela Rayner, during campaigning for the Hartlepool by-election in April 2021. It was at a time when indoor mixing was banned. Ukrainian officials are accusing Russia of violating a ceasefire as they try to evacuate civilians out of Mariupol. The UN has helped hundreds of trapped civilians get out of the Azovstal steelworks in recent days. And Ukraine's deputy prime minister says a further 50 have been rescued today. More than 100 are still stuck there. The MOD has confirmed Russia is continuing their ground assault on the plant. 16,000 jobs are at risk after convenience store chain McColl's confirmed it's collapsed into administration. It's after a last-minute rescue deal from supermarket chain Morrison's failed. McColl's retail group says it's hoping for a sale of the business to a third-party purchaser as soon as possible. The Queen has decided that only working royals will join her on the Buckingham Palace balcony at Trooping the Colour this year. Neither Prince Andrew, Prince Harry or Meghan will appear alongside Her Majesty. But a spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex has confirmed the couple will attend other Jubilee events with their children to mark the Queen's 70-year reign. This is GB News on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio. Now, let's get straight back to Patrick. No, but right. we could do it. Yes, it we're on. We're on the telly. Right, OK. The uh -huh. World Health Organisation... <laughs> <laughs> the World Health Organisation has warned that Britain will become the fattest nation in Europe within a decade, thanks to a Deliveroo culture fuelled by the pandemic. So, a damning 220-page report warns of alarming trends that mean that almost four in ten Britons will soon be obese by 2033. The highest rate in Europe, we well and truly, would be the fat man of Europe. Now... I absolutely love this guy, and for anyone who hasn't seen him on the telly before, uh, just go on YouTube, just type in Steve Miller, and you will not be disappointed. <laughs> anyway, Steve Miller, director of Fatnosis and self-proclaimed uh -huh. no-nonsense fat buster, joins uh -huh. me uh -huh. now. Fantastic. Hey, he's on the... Uh, uh -huh. he's, he's got a glass in front of him as well. Good lad. It's, it's Friday right, night, man. after all. It's Friday night, after all. I so, know, I, I, I... I've had such a busy week, you know, because of all this report. But then I got the call and I said, who was it? And they told me it was you. And I thought, yes. I ah. thought, it's worth staying in for. I thought, get yourself a, a little glass of Fizz Miller and, and have a little chat about this report that says something that, quite frankly, I'm not surprised about. We're going to be the fattest country in Europe. And why? Because we've normalised obesity. <clears throat> We're telling everyone it's really great to be fat. You can put yourself on the front cover of a magazine if you're fat. And uh, actually, it's time that we needed to be a bit more straight about it. And that does not mean being horrible to people. It means respecting everybody. It means respecting people's challenges and all <clears throat> of that sort of stuff. But it means being truthful. Because one thing that we're great at in the UK is making lots of excuses and we are high. Well, it's euphemisms on acid, isn't it? I mean, we, yeah. every, every time, you know, oh, you're looking great. You're looking curvy. Oh, you look really sassy. 
you know, we, we and, and people aren't thinking that at all. I mean, we've just got to be constructively honest about it. And then we can actually start putting the message out there that this is not right. It's Do about it addressing too- the balance. I mean, I've seen clips of you on TV, you know, talking about the large police being in town and stuff like this, which I must, I must say I thought was fantastic. But, but um, you know, yeah, I suppose some people might say, oh, don't be blunt, we have to consider people's feelings. But then I suppose the flip side of that is, well, we've got to consider the NHS as well and uh, where our tax money's going. And for obesity-related illnesses, it must be an absolutely astonishing figure. Yes. I, th- I th- Listen, I think people know that I have got a heart of gold and yeah, I have absolutely. got a great sense of humour. And do you know one thing? I've, I was talking about this on another broadcast this morning. When people talk about losing weight, it's all full of pain and doom and misery. And the one thing that I have, God gave me, um, still my weakness is a talent, that I can make it, you, I can make it, I can desensitise the, the, how hard it is by actually, you know, enjoying it and having a bit of a laugh. And, and actually, when you're laughing at yourself, losing weight becomes easier because it's much easier to control the intake. So yeah. I'm, you know, I, but of course, you see, you've got all the the other lobby that are kind of, oh, you mustn't say this, you mustn't say that. The one thing that really annoys me is when people say, oh, it's because of mental health issues that everyone's becoming uh, too fat. Well, actually, there is some truth <clears throat> in that, of course. But actually, when someone is obese, obesity causes mental health problems. Mm-hmm. So actually, they can't have it all their way all of the time. And as as far as it goes with fat acceptance... Look, let's appreciate everybody. I agree with that. I'll put my arms around anyone. But I if you can, get around if you can, you know, some <laughs> some of them might be too fancy. But we, yeah, go on, carry on. <laughs> I think. Uh, listen, I think you're looking great. Mike, <laughs> I wasn't talking about, about, about me, but thanks, Steve. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> lovely. Uh, you didn't sound too convincing either, did you? You could have lost more than a pound and a half, though. Oh, uh, I know. I know. Honestly, <laughs> mate, it was. Didn't you uh, lose that? No, I know, I honestly, yeah, I, I actually, that, no, I've been quite bad the last couple of weeks. I've just, um, well, you know, I was going to blame it on on, on, on my mental health, but I think we've, all, we've already covered that, haven't we? No, but, um, no, but, but seriously, though, do, you know, do you think that we do need to be a bit blunter with people? This idea that big is beautiful, OK, all right, fine, if beauty is in the eye of the beholder at the end of the day, but... Beer holder. The, the beer holder. The beer, or the beer holder, <laughs> as my friend Aidan has, has just said. But... <laughs> Yeah, actually, we, we, we do. Do we do maybe need to stop normalising it? That's your point, is it? Well, we have to. Of course, we have to stop normalising it. Why? Why on earth would you start singing on a Friday night if you're happy and you're fat? Clap your hands <laughs> if you're happy and you're fat. Why would you do that? You just it would just be ridiculous. If the serious point here is, if you are obese, you are potentially on death row. Uh, obesity leads to around 13, 14, can lead to 13, 14 cancers, you know, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. Uh, So why would we want to celebrate this? There's a difference, you see. Let's celebrate people. I'm all for that. But celebrating obesity? No, no way. Not on my clock. No, exactly. Are you concerned that other European nations are going to look at us and be even more scornful than they already are. I know there's parts of, you know, the Costa del Crime, for example, there, where I think, oh, the Brits are coming, they'll demand their roast dinner on a Sunday and their bingo in the evenings and this, that and the other. But now, do you think that Europe, Europe is looking at us like, frankly, a nation of t- trundling tubsters? Well, I have news on that because oh. I don't know this. But actually, next week, next week, I, I'm flying out to Malta because I've been called over there. I'm making a little documentary over there because Malta are, yes, Malta are the fattest nation in the EU, uh, closely followed by Turkey, because I I don't think they're in the EU. I don't know anymore. No, they're not. Um, That's fine. I'm I'm going out there. I'm I'm going out there and I'm going to be um, analysing what the issues are. So I'm actually more intelligent than I look, by the way. I should look at all the socioeconomic issues and all of that. But I will also want to talk to real people on the street in terms to to assess whether it is a mindset. And I think we have mental lethargy, to be honest. Uh, I don't know whether it's like that in Malta, but certainly in the UK. And we're we're very defensive when it comes to talking about weight and talking about, you know, uh, the word fat, for instance. I mean, you know, I get shot down all the time for using the word fat. Uh, And I say that as someone that was 
well, very fat, you know, um, right. and I had to sort myself out, sort myself out. So I say, yes, we, we, we have been normalising it, but it's when we talk about being kind to people, you're not being kind to people by saying to them, you look fabulous at 24 stone, five foot six, and you should, okay. you should be very happy in yourself like that. I don't think that's right. Uh, and, okay. I, uh, and it's not about mocking the person. It's about helping them and supporting them, of course. But it is about honesty. It is about truth. Yeah. And that's what we're lacking. All right. Steve, you're a legend. Thank you very much. Enjoy Malta as well, Thank by you. the way. I'm sure by the sounds of it, the food's pretty good. So uh, it should be, should be all right for you. Let's Steve Miller, director of Fat Gnosis, self-proclaimed no-nonsense fat buster as well. Now I'll bring my panel in. Aidan, you look like you've had a few too many visits from Deliveroo. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you what, I actually got my card cloned um, <laughs> in just either side of Christmas. Right. £1,400. The bank won't pay it back to me. Really? But I looked through, yeah, I looked through the transactions to see where the money had been going out. And the transactions were between sort of 10 and £20, so they weren't noticeable as if... Wow. You know, not, not as much as if someone had bought a 500 quid suit yeah. in, um, on the high street or whatever. But So the small transactions, £450 of, those, of that 1400 quid went on deliveries. £450 oh. went on Just Eat. So £90. Right. Pounds. Someone was basically feeding their family on my account for about... Five weeks. Which restaurant did they use? Well, I don't know. I haven't looked into Yeah, was it busy. classic? You can find out a lot about this kind <laughs> yeah, of person yeah, 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 now, yeah. can't you? Yeah. We can narrow it down. I'm, I'm like, gripped. Who did it? Who did yeah, it? yeah. Well, yeah. maybe even in supermarkets, you, the checkout um, staff are told not to comment on, on people's shopping, you know, so I mean, you can find out about people's habits and things. Yeah, you shouldn't yeah, try exactly. too much. But I'm going to, my investigation isn't done. I hope to get to the bottom of it. But, but yeah, £900 of 1400 spent on delivery and just eat. The rest of it was, in, it was still all food. Yeah, uh, it was a it was a milkshake place up in Manchester. It was a few other different places. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just just food, 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 food. Someone fed their family, and that means they were delivering on deliveries probably every other night. Goodness gracious, you know it was what? the I dream that, in a way. That, yeah. that, 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 that's that's oh. a fat notice guy was just saying. Yeah. yeah. That you know they put themselves on death row, and actually that's just what we, like you know when you talk about should we bring back um, you know the death sentence? Yeah. What we do is we just feed people up. <laughs> yeah. We put them in the room and we force feed them until <laughs> like, they die of obesity. Like a oh, foie was, gras goose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was worried when I was thirteen, stone ten. Uh, a few months ago, someone actually offered to do a sponsored walk once around me. <laughs> What's the 13 stone? You're quite 13 a small stone, bloke. 10. That's yeah, yeah. 13, no, it's okay. I'm down, as of this morning, I'm 12 4. So that's all right. It's okay. my fighting weight. It's my fighting So you weight. are You're fit. two and almost two and three quarters stone lighter than me. Yeah, I'm not going to go in the ring with you. I'm not going to fight with you. <laughs> I'm not, I'd, yeah, I'd, be, I'd be too light. But yeah. you, can get, you can get rid of it quite quickly. And you're being unkind to yourself, to yourself as well on the weighing, as I said to you in the break as well, because your mm. clothes are not part of your, your weight. That's I weigh true. myself on a Tuesday morning. And a Friday morning, always naked, always having relieved myself from the front of my body, and well, I watch, take... watch out, watch out, ladies! <laughs> I tell you what, you're going to get, you're going to find it's out. It's in an enclosed space; well, nobody can there's see. There's people that cloned your card, presumably know your address. You're going to get a knock on the door every Tuesday and Friday. I'm, I'm now. always naked. I'm always making sure my body's right, yeah. empty as possible. So you give yourself a ki as kind a reading as possible. And start, you need to start yeah. weighing yourself naked. That would be my advice. I need to start weighing naked. Yeah, I mean HR issue there. I would imagine really, there's yeah. quite a lot of females in this office. Yeah, I guess so yeah. No one wants to see that, but uh, but there we go. Right, okay, just moving on from that now, although it was a wonderful image. Uh, a police station <laughs> closes every fortnight, okay? So a police station closes every fortnight. Uh, and this is amid accusations that criminals are getting away with it, okay? So at least 217 stations with front counters allowing the public to actually talk face to face to officers have been shut down since 2015. There's been some astonishing cases here. One of them was turned into a cannabis grow house, seriously. <laughs> And in another one, as well, more seriously, was a lady was raped in front of a police station. In front of a police station. But anyway, there we go. Spending on youth services in England and Wales has actually been cut by 70% in less than a decade. Has this made people feel more unsafe on their own streets? Don't forget to get in touch on this yourself as well. But joining me now is Tom Pickering, Marketing and Communications Manager at XLP. It is you, Tom, yes. A charity working to create positive <laughs> futures for young people in London. How are you, my good man? You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm well. How are you? I'm all right, thank you, mate. Look, cheers for joining us on the show. Initially, just about the police station stuff. Do you think we'd have less crime if there were more police stations open? No, the police are there to stop crime that's already happened. I think when we're looking at how to solve the problem we want to probably look at how to stop crime happening in the first place which is more about providing opportunities in different areas 
Uh, indeed. Now, now, just talk to me a bit about how we can go about combating that, because a lot of people talk about defunding the police. Well, in a way, I suppose that's currently what we've done. We stripped them bare of 20-odd thousand officers and, and then also, as well, removed a lot of the police stations, the face-to-face -face police stations, as it were. That hasn't really worked, but you're all about the community work, are you? Yeah, I mean, we work with 2,500 young people across London each year. Um, like funding's been removed from lots of areas of society. Every one of them has been affected. Uh, I think probably the pandemic highlighted issues that were already there. It sort of just exacerbated them, really. Um, but in there was a there was a sort of there was a study done recently from London City Hall. They published analysis that confirmed a strong link between serious youth violence and young Londoners who live in areas of deprivation and poor mental health and poverty. And the areas of deprivation, they've got one thing in common, they lack opportunity. So if crime is more prevalent in areas with a lack of opportunity, it's important that you work to provide what's lacking. Uh, we, we go into communities, into the heart of estates, into schools, with trained youth workers to work with young people to help them feel safe, to show them how to pick a positive choice over a negative one. And yeah. it's, it's not a quick fix. It doesn't happen tomorrow. You, 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 you've got to stick at it for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Well, some people watching this right now will be shouting at their TV screens and they go, look, they completely understand about the deprivation <laughs> side of things, but there's no excuse ever, ever, ever for picking up a knife and using it on someone in anger. What would you say about that? Oh, we'd agree. I'm sure we'd all agree that, that we want crime to be lower, that we want you know, knife crime to not be a thing anymore. We, we don't want people making these choices. As youth workers, that's why we work with young people before they're picking up the knife. Uh, we, you know, we want them to learn that there's a different way to live their life than maybe picking up a knife. Do you think as well, though, that physically seeing a police officer... Again, people at home... I've been asking you to get in touch quite a bit today, actually, but it's because I just want to hear from you, but get in touch, GBviews at GBnews.uk. When was the last time you saw a Bobby on the beat in your area, for example? And I think there's more in London, certainly, when I was back up north. I don't, I'm not 100% sure the last time I saw a Bobby on the beat, actually, uh, up north. But do you think at all, though, that there might be more of a deterrent for people if they can physically see their police officers. I get what you're saying, you've got to do the grassroots work, right? But if they can physically see police officers, is that not more of a deterrent? Uh, I can see why it, it could be, I think. But we've the trends have been getting worse and worse over, over, over the years. And um, I think if that sort of previous approach of stop and search or whatever you kind of increase the, like the kind of funded into police out on the streets. It's, it's been a bit of a plaster over the wound, uh, sticking with the knife analogy, I guess, rather yeah, than yeah. working out w how the wound got there in the first place. Now, I'm not sure if you can bleach yourself out of a social crisis, uh, but we do need better relationships with, with the police. I think there's lots of people that see a police officer and go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm running the other way, um, yeah. regardless of whether they've done something wrong or not, just because they've got a they've, they've got a misunderstanding, a mistrust. And I think we want to build that that trust back. I think we want to build that trust back as well. I do think, uh, and this is purely anecdotal, but I do think I have seen what appears to be uh, a gradual lessening of respect for police officers. I think there's some pretty shocking social media clips around, maybe uh, people harassing police officers. Potentially, maybe I'm looking back at this with rose tinted glasses, I wasn't alive in the 50s or 60s, for example. But, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a way that doesn't seem necessarily to be the case back then. But anyway, I could talk to you all evening, my good man, but I'm going to I'm gonna have to let you get going. But please do come back on and please keep up the good work. You are saving and changing lives. Tom Pickering, their marketing and communications manager at XLP, which is a charity working to create positive futures for young people in London. Right, now, coming up. We'll be rummaging around your parts, you lucky people. <laughs> this week Ooh, features yeah. a trampoline, a grenade, an inflatable penis. Don't miss it. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debate, some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr.
On radio, they call it the drive time slot, 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. as listeners head home. It's that part of the schedule when the dust of the day's events begin to clarify, and we try to make sense of it for you. Brazier is drive time for radio and TV. It's fast, it's punchy, it's opinionated, there's a brazier angle and a little bit of levity. That's the question. That's two questions, actually. <laughs> That's brazier, Monday to Thursday, 4 till 6, on GB News. Hello, I'm Patrick Christie's. And I'm Mercy Moroki. Make sure that you join us Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. until midday, right here on GB News for To The Point. We're not afraid to talk about the topics that matter to you or the big topics that always matter. We cover absolutely everything from the breaking political stories of the day to law and order, what's going on in the channel. We're not afraid to hold people to account. We always make sure we include your views on our show. Indeed, if you're thinking it, you can guarantee that we're saying it. So make sure you join the conversation with us 10 a.m. until midday, Monday to Thursday, but To The Point on GB News. I'm Dan Wooten. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Welcome back. Yes, now it's time to rummage around your past, where we dig deep to find some of the absolute gems of local news. We always want to highlight local news stories here on Friday Night Feast. Local <coughs> news, tremendous thing, and it's dying out, and we want to give it a bit of a boost. So, in Sunderland, a man confused an old trampoline for an elderly man unwell in the street. So, Damien Webster came out of his house in the morning, and he thought he saw another man leaning on a wall. He didn't think anything of it, but when he came out again later to his road in Sunderland, the man was still there. So Royal Army worker Damien shouted over, then went over to check he was OK, and basically just found a pile of metal and netting. Right, OK, good stuff. So, <laughs> uh, a town centre shopping street was sealed off by police this morning after a suspected grenade was donated to a charity shop. <laughs> police were called to the British Heart Foundation store in, I don't know, Mesner Street in Wigan on Sunday after the grenade was discovered in a piece of furniture donated. I mean, this is pretty insane. It was then established that the grenade was not given to the store with any malicious intentions. They did. You look a bit like you, you know, possess something that's about to explode. Uh, what do you feel yeah. like this? <laughs> um, so, it's, uh, go through it again. So, grenade has been handed to a... Grenade donated in cupboard. Grenade in cupboard. Cupboard grenade. Spent more time in the closet than out and jump. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. A suspect package is... You, it's easy to joke about, but honestly, I think it's quite serious. Re really? Yeah, I do. I, do, oh. I, do, I, do, I shouldn't joke about it. No, I'm joking. Oh, God, it's OK. <laughs> Back in the day... <laughs> completely. Back in the day, if you found a package, you'd be like, oh, it might be a freebie, it might be something nice. It might be yeah. It's like, it's like yeah, part of the parcel, but no-one's passed it. I've just found it. <laughs> and it might be something exciting. But now it's a bit more boom-tash-boom -boom kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I actually received... Rather a lot of fan mail uh, 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 this week, actually, and uh, <laughs> only one of them had anthrax in it, which I thought was all right. But yeah, and who? And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so basically, we we well, I don't know what the procedure is here. Okay, I just I keep out of all the admin stuff. Okay, but basically, our post goes somewhere else, and it has to get X-rayed and all sorts, right? Just in case someone wants to, you know, finish the job. And um, yeah, it was nice, but I get some weird stuff. People. People send me all sorts. Yeah, there was a guy, I knew a guy who you now works for a Premier League club in the communications department, but he was working for Wimbledon Football Club when they moved to Milton Keynes. Yeah. And the Spinzer group that went off and, and formed AFC Wimbledon, who now exist in League One, yeah. he was getting literal, literally human excrement in the post every wow. day just because he worked for the, the, uh, the Breakaway Club. You know, which is Good astonishing. Me. astonishing That's a lot of commitment. You've got to yeah. do it. Collect it in a vestibule yeah. and then put it in a package that will go through the letterbox. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of commitment. It I'd is. Be like, yeah, it is. We don't want to meet you. You've got to wait for the right time you. of day as well, you know? Do you remember yeah. Gillian McKeith, the woman who used to do, like, uh, another weight loss uh, thing? What's, how's your poo? How it? does your poo smell? Well, it smells like yeah. a poo, Gillian. It's horrendous. Uh, uh, <laughs> she used to go, she used to go, gosh, she'd find someone who was objectively very unhealthy, yeah. OK? Yeah. And she'd go, right, poo in that Tupperware box. Yeah, and go, right, OK. Yeah. And then she'd open it up, she'd let it ferment in there for a day or two, and she'd open it up and she'd go, oh! Oh, oh, 
it's disgusting. Yeah, it's a poo, Gillian. Anyway, right, there we go. In Wales, ahead of the local elections, highbrow stuff there, one party showed their naked ambition. Flyers for the Welsh Nude and Proud Party have been popping through the letterboxes of residents on the west side of Newport, and they proved to be quite the eye-opener. So the pamphlets feature a naked man purporting to be called Dennis Smith, <laughs> thankfully pictured from the waist up, actually, along with the slogans, Say Yes to No Clothes and Better Together Nude. <laughs> so their pamphlet calls for wipeable bus seats and claims naked men are 99, le 99 times less likely to be mugged. There's definitely some truth in that. Aidan, have you got the guts to go outside in just your birthday suit? Uh, believe it or not, I have formed for this, and I'm absolutely serious. It was a pr not, I wouldn't describe it as a problem necessarily. I was only three years old, right. but I did have a habit of when we lived in Biggin Hill, I used to go out and my mum came home shopping once and I'd go out of the front into the garden. The front garden is paved and I was literally just wearing nothing apart from my wellies and I was dancing around in the puddles. Wow. Yeah, Were you yeah. weighing uh, yourself uh, as well? Was it a Tuesday? <laughs> no, it was a, I do it every day. That was a problem. <laughs> no, seriously, that, that was a, it was, I wouldn't describe it as a problem. I was only three years old and I probably should have been, my dad mm. should have been more uh, conscious of where I was. I think almost definitely yeah. by the sounds of things. <laughs> but red, red, yeah. red, wellies, red wellies and I was naked dancing around in the puddles. Yeah. Uh, have you ever been to a nudist beach or anything like I that? I have. Do you know, it's, I don't understand this craze with like, um, it's sort of the people who want to go to nudist beaches. Mm. I remember going on there. It's like a very British thing. This yeah. man's running and, and it's all sort of, you know, woo in the wind yeah, and yeah. he's just got his socks on. Oh, and right. And it's, all, it's never like, you know, because the human body, you know, when you keep it well, is attractive. But yeah. it's never attractive people that want to no, get not. the kit off. No, it's not. It's never. I, 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 I just don't. Don't care. No, it makes other people uncomfortable sometimes when I do walk around naked. But I have been known to do it, and if people tell me off, fine, I'll stop it. But if no one stops me, I'll carry on doing it. No, exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing it near that school, though. Anyway, <laughs> right. In Scotland, a bride to be was attacked by a crazed yob who repeatedly stabbed the inflatable penis costume she was wearing on her <laughs> hen night. Laura Inglis was celebrating with friends in Eaglesham. Uh, I believe that's in East Renfrewshire. Which, uh, which, uh, good nap, no idea where that Scotland. is. Scotland. Is it? Well, there you go, that makes sense. Anyway, ahead of her marriage to Jill Hutchinson. So, a man charged towards Laura, repeatedly stabbing her inflatable costume, apparently. Have you ever received a uh, stabbing blow to your penis costume? <laughs> No, I haven't. No, I haven't. No. But I've been circumcised. Right. Good. <laughs> okay. And uh, Sajila, would, would would this would that cost you? It's all right, mate. Yeah. It really matter. I'm, uh, I'm well, sorry. I have. I have. I cannot stand these uh, the hen nights where they dress up as penises or or you know. I, I mean, I, you just would never want to get married. I think it's penis, isn't it? Is it penis? Yeah, I don't right. know. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a plural. Yeah. 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 I just. I, I'm I, not that saying I've got more than no. one. No. No. These hen nights need to be banned. And I and I've. Too many of these, and it's, hens are always worse than stags. Hens really? I can handle stags. I can handle. Oh, hens! Like you just, there's no way to go because they all like get together. Like, did you have <laughs> yeah. a go at her? I'm gonna smash her face in. <laughs> 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 well, a stag, you just got to get them alpha male yeah. and then just like put him down, and then yeah. everybody's like, Yeah, you tour once you tour him a new one, yeah. you know, you're fine. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's fantastic. Right, okay, we're moving on from that now. It's time for Patrick's hat trick. The top three social media videos that I found online this week. So, first up, check out these greyhounds hard at work. And what we can see here is a load of greyhounds essentially running. Towards a how, fake how's this, how's this picture bunny, I don't know, but then, <laughs> but, then, but then a real rabbit runs across the track and every single one of them decides that they want to chase <laughs> that one instead, and they're off. <laughs> I want to say that no animals were harmed in the making of this film, that. <laughs> but I'm absolutely certain that they all that they were. I think I think actually, if you look closer, you can see them ripping it limb from limb. But anyway, um, have you ever been distracted by a rampant rabbit? Uh, all the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, me too. Good stuff. Okay, well, that's just enough for that. Uh, so now, are dinosaurs making a comeback? That's right, people. Are dinosaurs making a comeback? This video went viral, which showed what looked like mini diplodocuses running out of the sea. And it is strange, isn't it, that? Huh? Very, very weird. Um, so, I mean, look, I don't really know how to describe this to people on radio. They basically look like tiny dinosaurs. But you know what it is? It's lemurs in reverse. Yeah, look, they look a little bit like... Um... Like the, a small version of the Loch Ness monster. They do yeah. a bit. Yeah, that's mini, kind of mini art, you know, Locky. You know, you yeah. remember Locky? All those, all those Locky pictures babies. we've seen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mini, yeah, mini, yeah. Which, which, which proves there must be a Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Someone uh, has to give birth. Uh, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Well, we're going to um, we're going to have a quick look at it again. These are lemurs in reverse, basically. So another quick look at this video now. They look like tiny dinosaurs. Yes, there we go. I like the fact that someone's really gone to the effort to, well, make that. I suppose. But anyway, yeah, mini right. Lockies. Yeah. 
So you, you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Well, I've seen enough pictures of it, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it must be in there. I can't believe it could be apocryphal after all these years. I mean, you know, I mean, listen, I, I don't know. I mean, no. you know, I want to go and see it myself before yeah. I pass any judgments. But, I mean, you've seen enough pictures going back over a long enough period of time. I think there could be something lurking under there. There could be something yeah, in I, there. I think I if you serious, drink so. enough yeah, yeah. and go down there, you probably will see him. Yeah, yeah, probably. Indeed. Drink and juice Loch Nesses, I think that's what's been happening. Do you I've think? Yeah. I've seen worse in my local nightclub, to be honest with you. Gosh, well, <laughs> yeah, back on the handies again, are we? Right, US <laughs> President Joe Biden is in the midst of another controversy following his latest embarrassing blunder. <laughs> We're going to accommodate them. We're going to seize their yachts, their luxury homes and other ill-begotten gains. Of Putin's kleptocracy, uh, yeah, kleptocracy, and klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> oh. oh, that's just cruel. Someone that's needs just... to just put. If he was a dog, he'd have taken him to the vets by now. Oh, I think it's sad. It's actually sad. You're watching this play out in public. Yeah, yeah no, it's happening every other really, week, regardless really of your political persuasions, who you vote for. Yeah, it's sad putting you in front of it because I think he's, he's deep down he's a really, really decent guy actually. I think. Look, I, well, I don't know. I suppose Joey's on that. Would I won't know? But yeah, I, I can't it... laugh at that because I just I think that's really cool. And no. also, old age, we're all going to get old. It's one ism that we're all yeah. going to become victims of. It is. Yeah. But I, I just think you look at a country like America, the size of it, the population of it, the pedigree of it, the leaders of the Western world, whatever. Uh, not the best they've got, is it? Was the best choice between Can't them be. and Trump? I, I don't know. Anyway, but like I, said, I do take your points. So yeah, there's something. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, he's a bit doddery to say the least, isn't he? And it's yeah. okay now. How old is he? Ancient mate, a fossil. Yeah. He was around to see those original dinosaurs. You could say, don't know. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, right now it's time for this. <laughs> Yes, it's postperson Pat. Marianne has been on. Your trainer should be ashamed of himself speeding up the running machine for yeah. Patrick. I've just had two knee replacements after doing just that. This was my big weight loss extravaganza earlier on. We had a fabulous, one of our fabulous, our very own news readers here, who decided to, I mean, really slip into quite an aggressive character and train me for a bit. as well. Uh, worryingly so, worryingly so. That was a remarkably easy switch around. But Sir Stuart's also been on. There used to be a programme on Sky called An Idiot Abroad. You're making a remake, but staying in the UK. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, Stuart. I wonder whether or not you've ever met a lady called <laughs> Sue Harris. I think you'd get on rather well, but there we go. OK, now, Alan says, Patrick, I noticed you were asking a load of London metrosexuals where we should, whether we should bring back the death sentence. Is that me? Is that what me? answers were you expecting? I don't know. Uh, why don't you ask working class people? Frequently the victims of extreme violence, child grooming, gangs, That's murder or terrorism. Class. There you go. Well, yeah, exactly. What, and... what, chop liver? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you metropolitan type. Oh, I was actually uh, joking when I thought he meant me, but he actually does mean me. Yeah, he does, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah he does. Me. Let's get that name sitting, up sitting there in my, again. Sitting in my white suit. Sitting there, sitting there, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, metrosexual suit that I'm going to get for my son, by the way. Oh, excellent. It's called Reese as well. It's lovely, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, good chat, Lars. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. Wendy on Twitter says, in reference to the lovely Lurcher Bella, so we're about to try and rehome a rescue dog, okay? I adopted a lurcher eight years ago. They are absolutely lovely. Very quiet, easy dogs. Good luck to this one. And yes, indeed, good luck to Bella. We're going to be trying to rehome a rescue dog very shortly. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we've been doing this show now for about, what, eight weeks, nine weeks, something like that. We've had some close but no cigar moments with our four-legged friends. We've had, it's fair to say, a couple of absolute shockers as well. But um, this one, I think... Is a real, real winner. So hopefully we can go and get Bella a forever home. But coming up, we will also have our national treasure in the studio and it's Fake News Friday. I went out earlier to spread a bit of fake news to the public. How are you? I'm Patrick Christie. I do a show over the road there at GB News. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events, and I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates and strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7, on Jubes and Kerr. On radio, they call it the drive time slot, 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. as listeners head home. It's that part of the schedule when the dust of the day's events begin to clarify, and we try to make sense of it for you. Brazier is drive time for radio and TV. 
It's fast, it's punchy, it's opinionated, there's a brazier angle and a little bit of levity. That's the question. That's two questions, actually. <laughs> That's brazier, Monday to Thursday, 4 till 6 on GB News. Hello, I'm Patrick Christie's. And I'm Mercy Moroki. Make sure that you join us Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. until midday, right here on GB News for To The Point. We're not afraid to talk about the topics that matter to you or the big topics that always matter. We cover absolutely everything, from the breaking political stories of the day to law and order, what's going on in the channel. We're not afraid to hold people to account. We always make sure we include your views on our show. Indeed, if you're thinking it, you can guarantee that we're saying it. So make sure you join the conversation with us. 10 a.m. until midday, Monday to Thursday, for To The Point on GB News. I'm Dan Wilson. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wilson tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. On Mark Dolan tonight, my Mark Meets guest is Coronation Street legend Charlie Lawson, known to millions as Northern Irishman Jim MacDonald. In the big question with the NHS waiting list spiralling and a collapse in GP services, should we think the unthinkable and privatise the NHS? In my panel, Radio and Fleet Street legend Mike Porky Parry. And in my big opinion, Boris has proved his critics wrong by surviving a local election's bloody nose. See you at nine. I'd say we're all friends here at GB News, but Mark Dolan seems to get two promotional videos on my show and I don't get a single one on his. And I'm just saying, I'm just saying, in the interest of fairness, maybe I should, I should have one. Anyway, right, what's that? I've got to stop, I've got to stop, stop, move on, move on, the same, move on. Anyway, right, OK, so a double amputee has made his way up the UK's highest mountain to raise money for children who have lost limbs. This is a massively inspirational story, ladies and gentlemen, so make sure you don't go anywhere and you hear this one out. Paul Ellis from Witness in Cheshire, not many miles away from my original neck of the woods are, actually, um, battled through snow to reach the 4,413-foot summit of Ben Nevis. So it took you 12 hours, goodness me, yeah. which took place over the Easter weekend. Fantastic stuff, raised 19 grand to fund family holidays known as Kids Amp Camps for, yes, child amputees. I'm delighted to say that Paul joins me right now with, as well, Amp Camp support worker Keir Nicholson. Fantastic, lads. Great right. to have you both on the show. I mean, look, so you are this week's national treasure. It's normally me and a few other people in the studio here, so I'm going to have to give you a solo round of applause now. <laughs> there we go, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So come on, right, talk me through it. This sounds, uh, forgive me, this sounds nuts. I don't know how you managed to do it. Just a teamwork, basically. Yeah. That's what it was. We started at seven, about seven o'clock, mm. started to crawl, and then <sighs> go over the sty, and then I thought, well, this is quite easy. Ish. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> and then, then it started getting harder, and then the decision was made to take the backpack off me, because I had a backpack on, and then that made it a lot easier to right. crawl. Yeah. And then there was a way then. So, of... just the, the crawling side, I mean, this is, it's incredible effort. I mean, it must have taken it out of you unbelievably. It did, yeah, it did. Yeah, it was a, emotionally and, and physically draining, it was. Imagine, did it become a bit of a battle it did, in yeah, your own yeah. head? Yeah, yeah. Some, some parts are quite tough and you, you know, you sort of like, I mean, emotionally doing hard. Yeah. I mean, but we got through as a team. Uh, absolutely. And you're a big, you're quite literally a big part of this team. Well, um, yeah, I'm six foot seven, so I'm <laughs> quite a big part. It's just without the footballer's wage and uh, how so. Absolutely, yeah, but um, we could all dream, mate, yeah. But yeah, no, I was there. I led the support team with Paul and, you know, it was, it was great. I, it was a privilege for me to be part of the challenge. Um, Paul did extremely well. Uh, you know, he says, yeah. like, it started off easy. But it did, we did hit a bit of a rock and, and a bit of a wall as we got nearer the top. Yeah, and yeah of course. We had to yeah. give Paul a bit of a chivvy and uh, right. ask him to speed up somewhat because we were losing daylight and um, stuff like that. But he rose to the game and in yeah. the last few hundred metres just excelled. Oh, my gosh. I mean, this is unbelievable stuff. And for, if you are listening on radio, I would urge you to, at the nearest opportunity, get on our YouTube or take your telly on, I suppose, uh, because we can see some footage of this now. Uh, and it really is... An immense effort. Do you mind me asking a bit about your personal circumstances? Obviously, double amputee, yeah. what, what, what happened? I had a fall many years ago, mm. uh, which broke my legs, broke my spine. Oh. Uh, I was paralysed for about six months. Then, a, years later, I decided I had a break in my right leg again. I went to see the surgeon, he said, well, we can probably try and patch things up or 
best way forward is to remove the legs. Mm. Mm. So technology these days is amazing. Yeah. So I went down that route and then I got my first leg, second leg, and then I was off basically for, for many years. Then you're away. Away, yeah, walking. And how, how do you how do you find? Obviously, now you've got these these legs. Now that you've got, uh, do, you, do you notice much of a difference? Obviously, there must be. Uh, a difference. Well, obviously a difference from from, from before because I can walk now. I can go up mountains. Right, yeah, I, of course. I can, I can walk anywhere. I can do all sorts of things without camp. Yeah. Ben and the team have been have been fantastic over this past year. More, it's been a year now since since May last year when I went out uh, in Ingleborough Mountain, climbed all that with Ben and the team. Brilliant. And since then, we've been everywhere climbing mountains. Oh, and what, what made you decide to get involved? Uh, so I met Ben um, about a year ago, and Ben Lovell is the founder of Amp Camp Kids and Amp Camp. Um, we met through a chance meeting through Facebook. Um, I promised that one day I'd climb a mountain with him. Right. And one day I rocked up at Scaffield Pike <laughs> and met him, um, which was a, a great meeting in itself. I walked up very London, very cocky. Yeah, oh, right, mate, yeah. so is your name Ben Lovell? And he went, <laughs> yeah, we'll give you away the leg. Um, and, I, and I didn't know really what to say, quite frankly. Um, so, yeah, that was the meeting. And from then, I've now become part of the Limitless. So we're in the forming, forming a charity. Um, I'm a support worker for Amp Camp Kids. So I'm actually, I'm one of the the people that sees the benefits, yeah. the money that Paul yeah. raises. So Paul's paid for nearly four camps now. Wow. So that's wow. 24 children's lives that we can change. Um, if you add the parents into that, that's another 48. You know, Absolutely. So we're, we're looking at, you know, changing a lot of people's lives. And, and the benefit, you know, when you see these kids turn up and camp, they won't leave their parents, they're too shy. Um, they, they spend a few days with the team, come out plan, we take them out to see Wales, we take them out to wow. theme parks. Um, and by the end of the week, these children, it's just, it's, it's a whole yeah. new different, you know, child. So it's its absolutely immense. And, you know, without Paul, we we can't do it. We can't yeah. send these children. So, you know, that's why Paul deserves from, you know, from myself and Ben and the team, we give Paul that round of applause. Oh, well. you got another one. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, one. fantastic. Uh, because we couldn't do it without his fundraising. No, absolutely. Best of British. You know, you really do, you, people like yourself, when, when yeah. you, we see a bit of adversity or, or whatever, or you go through a bit of adversity, more than a bit, let's be honest, and it's about how you react to that, isn't yeah. it? You know, and, and your reaction by helping to massively improve other people's lives. Yeah. Have you got anything else lined up? Yeah, I think Keir's going to iron up Scaffold Pike, crawling up that. Right. Before August. Well, and here we go. I can, I can see what's coming here now. Go on. He's done Ben Nevis, he's done Snowden. It would only be right to do Scaffold Pike. So we're looking at that and maybe yeah. we'll take him up Scaffold in, in yeah. the same day as well. Um, but I don't, I don't think this is the end of it. We're doing run with Rich, uh, Richard Whitehead in a, in, at the end of June. Paul's asked Richard if he can crawl that. Richard's agreed to that. Wow. So, yeah, he'll go and crawl with a seven-time Paralympian champion now. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah. yeah, what more can you... What more? Let's see. Let's... Crawling up, crawling up Everest, who knows? Oh, crawling up Everest, I'm going to wait for the cable car on Everest. I'm just going to, I'm going to decide, I'm going to decide a long time ago, I'd like to go up there, but I'll wait for the cable car. Could I potentially, I do, I do a thing called Challenge Christie's, obviously. Yeah. In fact, I'm raising some money at the minute for uh, this lad who, bless him, he's just walking from uh, John of Gross Lands and Bear for it's a really good lad, Nathan Dunn, um, to raise money for male mental health. So we're doing a bit of that, but I don't know, I could try and crawl something. Yeah, you could, yeah. You don't yeah, mind I think so. I think yeah. there could be a challenge. Have you ever have you ever been up our English and British mountains? Well, I'd no, well, not that one, not that one, but I lived in Lake District for a while, and it is, so, I mean, I'd love to do it. I'd yeah, love yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In, in your hometown, well, that sounds perfect. I'm trying to think what, I'm trying to think what the... Uh, what, 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 what peaks there are around the Wilmslow and Hanforth area? <laughs> I don't think there are any, really. Not really. Just, <laughs> no. Just top of Wigan car park. You're top of, you know. I'm a multi-story uh, in Wigan. Yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. But, uh, look, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations for a national thank treasure. You. Um, you know, this country needs people like you, absolutely. And yourself as well, thank my good man. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank, thank you for having us on and listening to us. Really, well, just really great to have you uh, both on the show. And let's just stay in touch, all right, because we'd like to do things together yeah, going beautiful. forward. Uh, absolutely. Well, look, I mean... Really, really, really inspirational stuff there, of course, wasn't it? I mean, just amazing, really, to think that people like this, they're amongst us. What are you doing, hey? What am I doing? Absolutely naff all when you look at this, people like this. It's incredible, isn't it? Paul Ellis from Witness in Cheshire there, of course. And just absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing story. And, of course, Keir Nicholson joined him as well. Right, stay in touch with us, people. GBviews at gbnews.uk. But now it's time for this week's edition of Patrick's Fake News, where I go out and I shamelessly lie to the British public, OK? I make up a story, I ask the British public what they think of it, and to be honest with you, I don't even bother to correct it afterwards. So some people have gone away thinking that aliens have visited Earth. I mean, that was even one of the tamer ones. But anyway, this week, I report that Boris Johnson has challenged Keir Starmer to a physical fight following the local elections. Here's how it went. How are you? I'm Patrick Christie's. I do a show over the road there at GB News. 
Um, so Boris Johnson has, he was joking, but <laughs> he's come out and said that he, he would be open to the idea of fighting Keir Starmer. Okay. Physically fighting. Him. Apparently so, yes. Thoughts? Uh, I don't fancy his chances. You think Keir would do him? Oh, yeah. I really? Think, I think he'd play dirty. Keir Starmer? But he's the uh, he he head of CPS. Yeah, I know. I just don't, I don't see it happening any other way. If, if you're an old guy like me, no, no, oh, the stop only it now. way you're going to win is if you play dirty. Go for the crotch. Exactly. You've yeah. got to take him down. You've got to take, take him down quick. Fell him like a tree. Okay, right. Boris Johnson, we know he's vulnerable. You know, well, where it's a bit vulnerable well, after all, don't we? I mean, what well, we do know where he's vulnerable. All he's got to do is cross his legs. <laughs> Boris yeah. Johnson is distracted. He can go for the kill. <laughs> Obviously. Probably well. pay to see it. <laughs> yeah. How much? Uh, well, I'm not saying I'd really like to see it. Maybe even a but four grand. <laughs> three fifty. <laughs> three fifty. Five pounds. Oh, I thought you went three hundred and fifty quid. Oh, no, 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 okay. not going that far. He's just come in. Boris was kind of joking about this, Boris right. Johnson, but he's basically offered to fight Keir Starmer. <laughs> Who do you think would win? Um. I'd say Boris. Yeah? I think he's had his fair share of fights. Yeah. I think I think I think Keir's too uh soft. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that. Do you think Boris would fight dirty? Yeah, of course. He'd go for the eyes. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Kick him in the nuts. I, I think so. I think he was uh too mature for that sort of thing. Oh really? So. <laughs> Would you actually like to see them fight? No, I don't like seeing people fight, if I'm really? honest with you. Uh -huh. we, after Will Smith and Chris Rock, I realised well, no, no time for violence. No time There's for violence. Russia, Ukraine, enough violence. Do you know what? I think Boris just might... Boris would have him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, why? What makes you say that? <laughs> I don't know, because um, Keir's a bit... Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Wet. It's a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a wimp, really. Definitely not Boris Johnson. You think Keir Starmer would do Boris? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you think Boris would do Keir? Sorry? You think Boris would beat him up? Well, you know, he's uh, he's surviving. He's a survivor. So, so yeah. from that perspective, he'll find a way to win. Oh, <laughs> no, no comment. I think no? they've got to concentrate on their jobs. But do you think in a, in a physical combat situation, Boris, is, he's, he's won it for you. <laughs> Boris will win it. I'm not saying he's doing too well at the moment. No. All parties go down before they go back up midterm. Yeah, but in an actual fight, an actual physical, physical fight. fight, yes. Oh, Boris win, yeah. <laughs> Why? Obviously. Bulkier. Yeah, bulkier, yeah. Bulk still. Right. Yeah, Despite but... his best efforts. Do you think he'd fight dirty? I think he'd probably read up on a couple of textbooks that he'd written about that it. He'd before. written, yeah. yeah. Or Churchill. Or Churchill. <laughs> I think he's done more. I think he's done more. Do you? Yeah. Almost everyone said Boris, because they think he'd fight dirtier. Yeah, oh, no, possibly. but I think Keir Starmer's white, you know, a bit wily. wily. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. A lot of people think he's a bit soft. No, but I that's think the thing, he's going to look soft, but underneath. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to make him angry. You don't want to make him angry. He's been, once he's, he's angry. Year, he's got years of hidden aggression. Yeah. <laughs> hidden aggression. Waiting wait to come out. He's got to let it all yeah. out. Okay. So we're we're, we're going to win all the money then if everyone's betting on the wrong one. Yeah, just, just last week, would you actually watch it if it happened? I think Most I'd probably, money for that. Well, you would, I wouldn't. I've got better <laughs> things to do with my time. You'd definitely watch it. You'd definitely you would, watch you it. Would, you I'm going to ask how much you'd pay. What, to watch it? Yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the ceiling on this? I don't know, 50 quid. <laughs> that's, that's as right. long as there was a free drink thrown in. Right, there we go. OK, so yes, yes again, me just lying shamelessly to the British public. And Aidan, you're stupid enough to believe that Boris Johnson would actually offer out Keir Starmer. Who do you think would win? Um, I, I saw Boris Johnson in 2006 at Old Trafford tackle a fellow called... That's true. Maurizio Gaudino. It was aggressive, it was premeditated. He was yeah. in the ring in such an... A calculating mood. Bang. It's difficult to stop it. It's game over. No, I agree. Also, a Japanese schoolboy as well. Uh, he famously took out while he was Did playing he? rugby. Yeah, it was a bit weird, that. Anyway, uh, who do you think would win? I think it'd be like a fight, like, you know, Bridget Jones's diary? Yeah, yeah, The yeah. two boys come out and it's just like... <laughs> like yeah, like yeah, Co Colin like Firth and like... Hugh Grant, wasn't it? Huh? Colin Firth and Hugh Grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I think that'd be the scenario. Nobody'd really win and no. get things smashed up. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly, I suppose. Anyway, right, OK, so moving on. It's time now for Dog of the Week. Yes, where we try to rehome a rescue dog. And tonight we're asking if you could give a home to lovely Bella. Oh, look at that little face. And for those of you who are wondering what Bella looks like, if you're listening on radio, a very cute dog. And it's a, it's a lurcher, I believe. Anyway, Bella is currently living at Wood Green Pet Charity in Cambridgeshire. And if you're watching on GB News TV or YouTube, then obviously you can see from her photos that she's a gorgeous girl who loves to snooze about the house in various different places and various different positions, making her the perfect house guest. Bella is a lurcher, she's six years old, and she looks like she's good as gold. And to find out a bit more about the lovely, wonderful Bella, we're joined by Wood Green off-site pet care manager, 
Hayley, thank you very, very much, Hayley. Um, well, I mean, I can't understand why Bella's not got home already. I know. Can you believe it? She's been with us now at Wood Green for just over a year, uh, looking for a home, watching all the other dogs go to new homes, and we would just really like it to be Bella's time now. Because she's waited so long. And look at her. Who can resist that face? So what's it's Bella's green. story? What's Bella's story? Where's she come from? I don't want to sound like blind, you know, blind dates. What's your name? Where did you come from? But that. <laughs> so that's absolutely fine. So the lovely Bella, um, who, as you said, is six years old, um, she actually came from um, an elderly couple who owned her, who just decided that she was a little bit too much for them and their lifestyle. Um, she then uh, was actually taken to a different rescue other than with Green, where she was kenneled and they did great things trying to rehome her. But actually, Bella's real thing that she doesn't like is being in a kennel environment. She really does struggle with that. She's oh, such a people her. dog um, that she doesn't like that at all. So uh, the rescue that were trying to rehome her actually reached out to Wood Green. They know that we've got a very established foster network um, of wonderful volunteers who uh, will house a dog temporarily in their home whilst they're waiting for that permanent home. So Bella has actually been very, very lucky and very spoiled, as you can see, because she's actually been in one of our wonderful fosterers for the last year, waiting for a new home to come up. OK, now, I'll ask this every single week. I'll ask it again. Is she good on a walk? She is absolutely fantastic on yes. a lead. She doesn't pull on a lead. She does need to be kept on a lead, and she isn't particularly great with other dogs. She'd like to be the only okay. pet in her home. She's had a few negative experiences with other dogs. Okay. She likes to have all that attention to herself, but she does walk really nicely on a lead. Um, she also absolutely would love to go somewhere where she can walk without seeing lots of dogs. She'd like to kind of just okay. keep everything to herself. Um, she also loves a walk on the beach. This is her absolute Who does place. it? Um, I feel if she could have a wish list of relocation areas, she would love a beach walk. OK, all right, fantastic. And just quickly now, how can people get in touch? If they would like to get in touch to Rehome Bella, they can visit our website, which is www.woodgreen.org.uk. Um, go to Adopt Our Dogs, find Bella's beautiful picture and click on, and we'll be able to give you more information and start that rehoming process for her. Good stuff and good luck to Bella. And can I just ask, is your name Hayley Healy? My name is Hayley Healy. I think I'm Fantastic. the only Hayley Healy. I'm this is Hayley. amazing. <laughs> so, so good they very, very nearly named you twice. I think it's fantastic stuff. Thank you very, very much. Look, it won't be the last time we talk. Give us an update because you will rehome Bella and we want to know about it. Right, we've got to rattle through people. We're running out of time quick here. Right, uh, OK, well, you first. You want that dog? Uh, no, I'm just not a dog man. No? I'm not a dog man, no. yeah. Um, I just, I can't go on. We, we always had cats when we were kids. Right. Uh, one cat called Jess lasted 16 years. Uh, good effort, Jude, good innings, Jude, not. Um, Jude, made, Jude made 17 years. Uh, good five effort. Five years ago. Yeah, it's not bad at all, yeah. Both black cats. Uh, taken from the Post and Pat theme, the Jess one, because I was a big Post and Pat fan. Oh. I knew every word, I knew every word to every episode of the first two series. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> Good. Uh, yourself, dogs, uh, like them? Uh, I'm not, but I do love my friend's dog as a rescue dog. Yeah. It's called Homer. But also, I love this section of the show. It's yeah. Like, it's, like, it's like Tinder for dogs. It, it is, doggy yeah. Tinder. Yeah. Some of it, although, although I'm <laughs> not is. sure. No, some, yeah. of those pictures, some of those pictures wouldn't get onto the profiles, I don't think. No, I, I agree, yeah. <laughs> try, I might try Tesco online dating the other day, actually. What? Yeah, Tesco, Tesco? Tesco online dating. Yeah, yeah. He tried it a few years ago, actually. Ended up with a bag for life. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> OK, right. right. OK, right, people, people, people. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for everyone who's gone to justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash challenge Christie's, OK? We started this show on 6,500 quid. We're already up over seven grand now. It's 7,021. It's gone up to 7,041 in the last few seconds. Right, OK, OK, OK. Justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash challenge Christie's. I'm being shouted out. Has anyone got a taxi for Christie's? Take two for Christie's. Gosh, right, well, this was the week that Mo Farah admitted his career may be over after an embarrassing defeat to a shop worker. And, of course, after a week of shame for Tory MPs, Ben Everett posed in front of a neon sign 
saying, lick me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, an embarrassing <laughs> error was found in a 16... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we are. Good stuff. An embarrassing error was found in a 1631 Bible in New Zealand informing readers to actually commit adultery. <laughs> and Real Madrid fans paid tribute to their favourite former X Factor contestants. Hey! Ryland Clark, <laughs> there we go. Look, thank you so much to sports broadcaster Ada McGee. An you. absolutely fabulous comedian as well, Sajila Kirchhoff, for joining me tonight. Right, very quickly, justgiving.com forward slash fundraising, forward slash challenge Christie's. Please, people, let's save some lives for male mental health together. Coming up next, though, is a brilliant Mark Dolan tonight. Have a cracking weekend, everybody. Good evening. Alex Deacon here with your latest weather updates. Most of us are going to have a decent weekend. It's mostly dry and bright. Can't promise blue skies all weekend. Some places will be a little bit grey. But overall, a lot of dry weather thanks to high pressure. And when the sun is out, it'll feel pretty warm. Let's rewind, however, because right now it's far from dry across the country, certainly across England and Wales. This set of weather fronts drifting southwards, bringing some welcome rain in places. It has been very dry. Not a great deal of rain across southernmost counties of England, but some heavier bursts for a time across parts of uh, East Anglia and the Midlands, tending to peter out as we go through the early hours. Hours. Elsewhere, turning dry and clear spells will allow the temperatures to drop down into single figures. So a coolish start.